uh, today. I apologize, I don't have my webcam on. I'm feeling a little bit, I don't know, just a little bit rough, not bad, really, just, I don't know. I'm kind of nestled here in blankets and feeling a little bit homebody-ish, so if you don't mind, I think I'm just going to be in busy Zader for the moment. That said, I'm here. Where have you been? I'm very excited for more hunting to commence. I should have a droop here in just a second, too. And with luck, perhaps a one yon yon and a marble dies before too long. Hmm. The question. Yeah, sorry, Discord's been acting funky. Apparently it is still acting funky. What is going on here? Hmm. Well, on the upside, made some real good progress today with uh, some overlays and setup stuff. I think we're going to have a much nicer looking stream here very soon, and I'm excited about it. Oh my god, I think Discord on my phone just had a stroke. Well, <sighs> time for Discord to hit the old dusty trail, I suppose. So, let's see, we have a lot of work to do. We just got to high rank and got some stuff done. And we... Oh, there, there we go, okay. All right, we're out. So what are you working on, Drew? Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Cool. <laughs> um, I need some baggy stuff for uh, Marvel Dice and I figured out that there is a great set available to us that doesn't have Horn Maestro, so if you still got that arm, um, that could be a fallback to get that. But we can get plus five in both attack up and critical eye and think one point in challenge maybe and one point in wait no heroics sorry which might be less useful because we're not trying to die <laughs> um and one point in handicraft and then not sure what it's but five and five that's that's really good. Hey, Sabby, Juicy. welcome. And thank you. For the, the hey. Hi, Sabby. And the, 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 the Just start. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, I guess that's kind of normal, right? Usually there's like baggy or jaggy or something that's going to be a real good early set. Oh, yeah. So it's it's one piece baggy, and that's... um. Oh, what was the whole set? One sec. Yeah, I, I need to do it. more looking here still on my armor. Yeah. Don't think... Well, of course, you know, we've only done so much high rank thus far, so I don't have access to too terribly much yet. I'm happy to see so many... Or starting to see some slotted gear popping up. Yeah, I think I think they did it pretty well where I don't think we had any way to get them prior, so it kind of, I don't know, it would have been nice, I think, 
who have had slots in lower rank stuff for if we did want to take it in the high rank, but I don't know that they're not there if you keep upgrading the defense. I mean, that is possible, I guess. Did that happen in World? I don't remember that. I don't remember either, because I remember you could break stuff through, but I think sometimes it made a lot more sense to just spend less uh, point or material, just build the upgraded piece. Although I think there were some that you would want the skills of the lower rank one, and you could get the defense up to uh, you know the higher ranks, but it was costly in pieces, I think. Be safe, Savvy. That said, I don't remember. Huh. Was that robot? What's that? No, you're, you're good. I was just saying be safe to Savvy because she's lurking and driving. Uh, I was squeezing that in between oh. <laughs> between your, your statement. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Shoot. I was going to ask you a question about what you just said. I forgot what it was. That's okay. It'll come to me later when it's probably not important anymore. I think <laughs> it wasn't a thing for like slots to appear in upgraded stuff. I'm not positive. I'm pretty sure it's not, and I at least so far in this game, I did fully max out some of my defense on my gear that I had, going into high rank. Which, of course, uh, upped a limiter on some of the items. And I've, I've fully upgraded them again because I know that was, you know, a couple of the big wigs in the Monster Hunter community that are in the know were like, you're gonna get so many armor spheres, like, go for it. Upgrade your shit. Um... But I do know that, at least in my experience, I find that there's not really a whole lot of a point to making a whole lot of low rank stuff. I think we talked about that briefly yesterday. It's like, just just make something to get you through low rank, and then save all your other resources, and then go balls to the wall once you get to high. At least to me, that seems like the safer more efficient bet, you know what I mean? Well, either Droob got eaten or Discord's being a dick again. Let's see, ooh, I like that. Attack boost 2 and sh uh, sleep resistance, that's kind of nice. And baggy coils. Oh yeah, no joke. Baggy does have a lot of attack on it, doesn't it? Hmm. I think I told you, Drew. I don't know if you can still hear me or not. Hopefully you can. Um, <clears throat> but I had wish listed the the upgrade to the armor I had or had before the Kulu chest because it has two levels of Slugger and it has Hornmeister on it. So I could replace my Horn Maestro charm with a different charm. Though I'm not actually sure that there is a charm yet that I want. Like, I looked at the melding thing and I was making some of the ones that I had, you know, useful abilities. Like I made a Horn Maestro one, obviously, immediately. And I made a, uh, what is it called? Uh, Geologist. And I think I made a Botany one. Trying to remember, I, it seems like it seems like I didn't, I wasn't interested in getting a lot of the abilities, which of course that's not surprising where we are at the point at this point. Pottery. Lottery ticket. I hear you now. You're biting. Discord being a punk? I think so. Um, did, did you hear the, the armor set? No, no. Um, you, I said I was fitting that in there, uh, trying to say something to Savvy, and then I had a question for you and I forgot, and then you said something, and then you went silent for a really long time while I talked about armor. Did you hear me say either Droob got eaten or, or Discord being a dick again? <laughs> Uh-oh, I think we lost Groove again. 
No, I was muted. I uh, got a phone call. Oh, um, okay, cool. No, I, like, I God damn it. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that you said you had forgotten. Um, and I was trying to diff, telling you what the armor set that we figured out was. Yeah, yeah. Let me Would help. You so I can look at it while you're saying it. Oh, you know what, too? I learned a thing last night, bees, and I need to remember it. <sighs> I have a pad and a pen, and I'm going to make timestamps. Because that's a thing I can do. Also, I might want to write this armor set thing down that Drew's about to top tell it. So. Which, if you are saying things, Drew, we can't hear you. Muted again, because I'm organizing the so, area of the phone sitting on. Gotcha. I know when you're ready, I've got to grab a charger, I think. Probably a good thing to have. While you do that, I know what I'm going to do. Ouch. Aside from, you know, hurt myself more. That's just a day in the life. <laughs> Whee! The life of a Zader bee is beautiful, delightful pain. I need to be careful though, man. All this looking into overlays and uh, timers and transitions and uh, writing down timestamps. I'm in danger of becoming a professional over here. <laughs> Scary. Then what will become of the beehive? What would you... Right? Y'all didn't sign up for professionalism. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I've even been on time for like a week or and a half or something. Okay, what you got for me? Alright, do you want it in the order that's easiest to scroll through, or do you want head, chest, arms, that kind of? Um you know what I'd really like? is that pin that I just grabbed to write this down with. <laughs> Did you turn around and lose it? No, I'm sitting down and it's in my blankets and I can't find it. It's probably going to stab me in the ass later in a crucial moment during the fight. Oh, here it is. Okay, good. <laughs> it was dangerously close to my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Wanyan. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, hi -yo. And I like what I'm wearing in terms of looks, for sure. Um, it's pretty rudimentary, what I'm wearing at the moment. It's about a lot of level one abilities. But it sure does work. Yeah, Tigrix Bone and Ingot. All right, what you got, Drew? Kamura Braces S. Muro? Kamura? Oh. The village name? Right, the village. Kamura! <laughs> You said that was the S. Okay. I guess we. I guess that's what we're looking at right now, isn't it? That divine blessing and resuscitate. Oh, whoops! That's Kamara head scarf S. Which piece was it again? The gloves. Braces. Gloves are first. S Okay, sorry, my bad. Critical Eye and Heroics, nice. Mm -hmm. And then next... The next piece down in the scrolling is Hunter S. Mail. Hunter, Hunter S. Mail S. Oh yeah, nice. 
like it, like it. Followed by. I greatly appreciate that, Savvy. That's very kind of you. I will try to remember to shout them out. Yeah. Kamuro gloves us. Hunter me us. Who's next on our tasty voyage of discovery? Uh, Izuchi Helm S. Uh, Izuchi Helm. But I wonder if the Kulu Yaku Helm S wouldn't be um, another one. I'm not sure the value of maximum might versus the additional critical eye. Increases affinity of stamina is kept full. I don't like that ability. <laughs> I mean, I need to play with it more to see, like, how I truly feel about it, but thus far, having to keep your stamina full for a while to get a bonus, I'm not fond of that notion. Yeah, I don't know how long that while is either, and that Me would either. be my only... Is it, uh, do... Now, here's something I actually, uh, embarrassingly, I don't know, but maybe it's not so embarrassing because maybe it's not something that's been standardized. Oh, Wanyan, that's a really good idea, actually dash juice in that shit. Clever. There's also some uh, horn. Like, the horn can negate stamina use sometimes, right? Can do the dash juice effect. So those could have some interesting synergy. But do buffs like that... There's also... There's also, there's also those insects. That's right. And of and course there's also the bug that gives you, like, stamina use reduction and, and infinite stamina for a bit. Um... Are those kind of buffs, have they always been like a standardized time, or have they varied? Uh, so Maximum Might was new to World, I believe, uh -huh. and I'm not actually sure. Okay. Um, and I think there have been similar, uh, yeah. what, you do a thing for an yeah. amount of time. Because I'm get thinking buff. about, like, Kickback um, and, uh... There's one in this one yeah. too that's similar. Like, are those all like are those all the same timer usually? I've never really played with them. Me no. either. Myself. Yeah, I haven't either. That's why I was curious. I was like, you know what? It's actually never even occurred to me to look into that and see if they have kind of like a standardized um timer. Like they're all two minutes, or they're all a minute, or they're all forty-five seconds, or you know, whatever. Uh, or even if some of those overlap because some of them might not even um, be able to oh it's only 5 seconds okay well if it's oh, only awesome. max stamina for 5 seconds that's pretty ridiculous actually <laughs> that's easy as heck just right on your dog to sharpen or something yeah exactly just like hey Fido come here <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's nuts. If that's the case, that changes things. That that actually makes me want to try that out a little bit. So we got a Zuchi Helm S. So I still don't know the value of it versus the additional... What? Because after Critical Eye 4, like, Critical Eye 4 turns into um, greater than the individual pieces of Critical Eye from 1 through 3. Uh, so I don't know if going from 5 to 4 would be worth for the additional it's like 10% for the oh you know gosh I've got the whole thing right here oh how convenient also Wanyan just killed it for me but it only lasts for starting at 3 seconds and at max level lasts until stamina decreases and I'm just like dang ah <laughs> I see. I mean, if you're horning, if you're horning and you're just standing and wailing, that's amazing. 
I mean, yeah, it is. I, I'm still thinking that uh, it looks like it's probably superior. I mean, you would think it would be because it's conditional, whereas passive affinity is not. So it should be better in terms of its numbers. Otherwise, it's like, well, why the fuck would you ever use it? Like, um, but that's that's impressive if that's the way it works. I, that can easily be manipulated and abused. So, we'll. And critical eye four to five is a five percent increase if the, this is all correct. Yeah. Okay. I thought it had different scaling. Like I thought after four, like four changed how it was. No, maybe four was the last. It uh, goes to forty percent affinity. Yeah, no, Wanyan, that's crazy wild. I'm starting to lean towards that one then. We'll put an asterisk here by Kulu Home S. Okay, what's fourth on our list of insanity? Okay, so Baggy's got the next pieces. Oh. Uh, the Baggy Mail S. Oh wait. I must have got something wrong that I thought we had the Hunter Mail. Whoops, yeah, sorry, I have that and I'm using, or I was going to make it for a, an ice alternative to the craft. Whoops, okay. Um, <laughs> the baggy coil S is the baggy piece. God, I wondered because I looked at that and I was like, that coil is really good. Yeah, here you go, people, check this out. Here's what he's talking about. This is the waist. It's got a tack two and the sleeper just one on it by default, which is very nice. And then, uh, is it also Baggy Good Greaves? No. Oh. Well, this is the most absurd piece that we've got access to, Ooh. as far as I know. Um, it's toward the bottom of the list. Ingot Greaves S. Oh, I think that's what I'm wearing. Oh, uh, it's, the, it's the upgraded probably... version of what I'm wearing. You want to upgrade, because it doubles. Oh, I absolutely want to upgrade. Are you kidding? I just thought that I'd already gotten the upgraded version, but I guess I hadn't. So yeah, definitely going for that sucker. Yeah, look at that bad boy. Two attack and two critical eye. Mmm. So tasty. Beautiful. Well, there is a potential uh, all-purpose smash and grab set. And, um... It looks as though I can... I mean, here's what I'm going to do. Wonderful thing that they added for us in World is Wishlist. So let's go ahead and throw that on the old Wishlist here. I have... Apparently the Wishlist has also been expanded, it looks like, maybe? Which I kind of forgot. I, I should have been uh, Wishlisting all this shit. It's going to do it now. some of those abilities. Here we got Azuchi, Azuchi Helm as well. I'm gonna wait on Wishes. Though, look at the rad hair on that boy. Let's look at that preview real quick. Wait, is there a zoom? Is there a zoom and rotate function for preview? There we go. Oh, I guess no zoom, but there is rotate. Okay. Fair enough. Get some rad hair and an eye patch. <laughs> I've seen some shit, but I only saw it in 2D. y'all bees knew that or not, but people who are blind in one eye see in two dimensions. That's not true, kids. Don't take that to heart. Though depth perception is an issue. Oh, 
Our camera gloves for better picture taking and cohort co cohoot patching. I mean perching. Wow, I'm just mixing up all the words today. <sighs> well, fortunately, I don't need word brain for hunting. It does make streaming easier, but <laughs> you all know that how addled my brain is. You're used to it by now. All right, neat. Well, sweet dude, thank you for uh for that. That's great. Wait a hot second. Did decorations appear on? Holy shit! I didn't even realize that they'd been there. There's already the ability to create decorations, huh? Well, shit. How many do I have access to? Uh, I even has geology. So, anyone that doesn't know, decorations, some armor and weapons have slots in them. And those, uh, and charms. And those can have these put into them. They're basically gems that give you another point of abilities. Uh, for those of you who think, you know, think games like Diablo and stuff like that, age old tried and true system. Pop things in to your armor to make it even better and customize it further, right? That's what these are for. And apparently, we finally have access to a decent little uh, number of them. So that's good. We have armor pigment now. <gasps> Where did that happen, Droob? Um, gotten that one. Brain entropy. Okay, well, I'm gonna make my skull pink. <laughs> there we go. See, this is the one thing. A lot of people, probably if they've never played Monster Hunter, they'll be like, oh, should I get to dye my armor? And they'll get all excited. Don't get too excited. They severely limit what parts of your armor you can dye. <laughs> However, that said, I was able to make the entire skull hot pink. So now everyone should be happy. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more bitching about no hot pink up in here. <laughs> Got a giant pink skull on my head. You can't ask for more. <laughs> oh, anyways, Drew, you ready to... <laughs> Making it hot pink increases the fire resist? I wish. That'd be great. <laughs> Are you ready to kill something? Or are you finishing up with something over there? Yeah. In case you didn't notice, I do oh, have wow. a, um, uh, a new Hunter's Ink. Or new Carver's Ink up here. Room thing, whatever it's called. Okay, okay, okay. So also I guess you can charge your you can charge your palamute to run. I didn't know about that. I would have been doing that all over the damn place. And who'd you want to kill? Do you say Baggy? Uh. I have to figure that out because I. Need the... I might just need Ramombra. Oh, okay. And Kuliaku. So. Boy, in that case. Did you need me Kuliaku? I think I need a decent amount, actually. Let me look really quickly here, since I have this delightful um, wish list all of a sudden. Where is wish list? There it is. Okay, it 
looks as though I definitely need Kuliaku scale pluses and also a plume. I need a uh, few more. Yeah, I need a lot of, I need a decent amount of uh, Kuliaku parts, it looks like. And Remobra of Hides, of course, plus. And yeah, aside from that, I think we're pretty good. It looks like just a, mine, a mining and a killing, and it's mostly a killing of uh, uh, Kuliakus. Oh, I'll be right back. Sweet. Kuliakus soccer bird, right? Oh, yes, Swanyan, good point. Absolutely. Um, well, by all means, uh, you are you might actually get to the point where you can um, just jump straight into where we are, possibly, if you keep killing the village like you are. So, maybe you should get on that, and then we maybe we'll see you later. <laughs> but thanks a lot for popping in. Definitely appreciate it. And thanks for the info, too. On those abilities because I did not know about them. Learning the light bow gun. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Oh, it's an it's an arena quest. Oh, neat. Arena quests are fun, bees. They just throw you in a pit with a monster and they're like, have fun. <laughs> Steady the switch. Oh, this is neat. There's a whole bunch of like. Like, do you have to use the. How does this work? Do they force you to use that weapon? Like, do you just start the quest with a set? That's how Arena's always been. No, no, no. These are all like, these are these are like in normal quests, and it's like oh, it's a quest. Yeah, like steady the sword yeah. and shield, capture Aknops, Aknosum, honing your hunting horn, hunt a great Izuchi and uh, Tetradon, or Tetranodon. Steady the switch axe, learning the light bow gun. Like holy shit, how do these are these? Do they do it like the arena and just give you a set and throw you in? Hey, Savvy, welcome back. Got That's weird, man. Like, I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, hey, here's two, uh, hunt two Kulu Yaku. Totally not cool, Kulu. <laughs> How's that work for you? It's in the shrine ruins. It does Sounds not good. have... Also, I don't think you... Do not think I... Yeah, Discord went red and you still orange. Um, you don't... I don't think... It's just titled for the switch skill you're getting. I don't think it has anything to do with the loadout for the mission. Oh, okay. the quest. I gotcha. Well, I was just curious, because I was reading the description, and it's like, all right, Ace, lesson time. Harmonize with the sounds of nature. You serenade these monsters to per <laughs> permanent sleep. Make sure to find a new team for the Oh, so it's going to give me a new ability for the honey horn, is what it's doing. Okay, so it's given yeah, I think me... that's all the... Gotcha. Those are reward. The rewards are abilities for those weapon types. That makes more sense. Because I was like, I have never seen anything like this in Monster Hunter. That's interesting. That would have been kind of neat. But also, I like getting new abilities. So we're going to focus on that. Um, but yeah, you said you need Vermobra, right? 
Yeah. And I do oh, too. Yeah. What area are we in? So let's see. In where? Well, um, I was the the Kulu quest I was looking at. It's it. There are no Vermobra in that zone. So I was trying to see if there was a, a quest for them where there were Remobra, but I'm not seeing one actually in high rank yet. Might have to do them separately. Which is fine. I mean, we'll be killing lots of things, so. What would you like to do first? We can go for Remobras first if you would like. Uh, well, check. Quick, check expeditions might have Kuliaku in in a remote area. Yeah. That is a good and point. And we could get everything from one without maybe. That's like maybe point. we wouldn't get Zenny, but. Well, we don't. Yeah, it's fine. There's other ways to make Zenny. I mean, after all, if you want to make Zenny, you can just go and do a, a tour on purpose just to sell all the ore or something, right? Which I'm pretty sure I already have yeah. a really good indicator of how to make a ton of money. Because like I said, I found that crazy uh, magma tunnel. Where I just, there was like seven ore deposits. And a whole bunch of other crap, like all right next to each other. So as soon as we unlock the, that high, the high level expedition of that place, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong in terms of making, making the muns. I'm not seeing uh, those little bastards. I think they're in the lava place. I don't have them on any of my expeditions here. Remember? Yeah, they're the, the, the flying things, right? Yeah. Um. They wouldn't necessarily show up. Everywhere, like they're gonna be in this shrine ruins, uh, towards the peak oh. near the camp. Okay. They're also in the Frost Island, in one of the big lakes. I don't know about the Sandy Plains. Okay. Well, cool. Do you want to do you want to go the, to the ruins or the, or the or islands? Uh, what? Ruins or islands then? Uh, probably ruins. Do you have the Arzoros, Kulu, and Aknathom? Yeah. Do you have the same one? Oh, wait. No, mine is, um, Aknathom. Is that Izuchi? And Tetranodon, I think? The only one that has, uh, Kulu, it looks like, is the Plains. For me, I've got him here uh, uh, holding his egg, looking all shisty. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was going to say, yeah, it looks like I struck out on that one, but as long as one of us has it, we're good. Time for Soccer Bird to get kicked. I guess I should call him Footbird. Since, you know, soccer is called football everywhere else in the world.
time to eat some dango and kick some ass. And in about five seconds, I'm going to be fresh out of dango. Since my hunter eats it like he's Galactus after a fucking month-long fast. I love to imagine Galactus with just like some giant chopsticks. Like ramming them through a few planets and just being like, oh. <laughs> That'd be great. There's your next terrible, fantastic four, four sequel, everybody. <laughs> Galactus, devourer of cosmic dango. Dogs and ride. How how do you do the uh, the super run? Or is that an ability that you unlock later for Palamute? Um, while sprinting, which is the right yeah shoulder button. Yeah, but there's like a super it, charge dash. It up trigger. <gasps> oh, wh whoops. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Oh! Wow! Neat. <laughs> oh, I can't drive my dog. <laughs> Too much. Too much speed. Reggie's out of control, yeah. He wants someone to ride But I cannot drive dogs all back to do a wall, yeah. Oh, are you using a uh, charger blade? Yeah. Neat. How you liking it thus far? Um, feels really slow. Bad. Did you say it's pretty, pretty equivalent to how it was in the world? <clears throat> no, it's slower. Um, but I, it might be my best skill. How do you feel about Charge Blade in the world versus, like, uh, Jimmy? Uh, I don't know, but, um, so it's padded? Um, so, reposition via circle button, neutral circle. Mm -hmm. What, neutral? No, um, Left stick. Strong attack. So the reposition. Uh, and that was really great. It took a lot of getting used to, but it was another fantastic tool. Um, yeah, that sounds Yeah, that was nothing like. Yeah, that sounds really
And he's off. Off to the races. Oh yeah, this is a uh, harvest quest too, isn't it? Sweet. Which means we can do everything we want to do at our leisure. Oh hey, it's a bear boy. Oh, bearing down on him. Drew the bear back in it. <laughs> Welcome to Nim, bitch. <laughs> Lord Seder and the Bear of Nim. <laughs> now, where's Miss Frisbee when you need her? She gave each of us a frisbee that was a cow pie. <laughs> big, big plastic cow pie frisbee. <laughs> this is this is my world traveling, you know, academic daughter of famous biographer grandmother <laughs> you cracked me up <laughs> my my favorite though is still you know in our in our cottage up on the lake it's been in our family for like 130 years she uh <laughs> she got a light switch cover in the in the dining room the, where the main big table is of uh, Michelangelo's David. So of course the light switch is uh, perfectly placed, and you have to flick it up and down to turn the lights on. <laughs> and we had one night uh, we had this couple over, and uh, the husband was. Current, at the time, he was the governor of the state, and he was running for senate. And uh, <laughs> their kid really liked that light switch. And, really that light switch. Uh, and I don't think. They do. going on up there at the Crab Shack. <laughs> And we weren't getting good luck with like, you know, Kulu and like her mobras and stuff. So we we're just like, well, they're they're here. Yeah, I know that. So yeah, uh, old Footbird over here is is starting to feel the pain. But then I guess we need to climb a mountain and smack some bats. 
Draco bats or whatever. Little, little Wyvern boys. What are Wyvern bats now? Is that Rumobro? Ah, uh, okay. Whatever those things are. Snaky, they got big wings and they're cute. They're also in the Yeah. Call them a little bit more straight, straight wyvern. Yeah, they are pretty much straight yeah, wyvern. I don't know why I said bat first. I think I was just thinking about their wings and I was like, oh, I guess they're just well, pretty they, much just wyverns. They do have pretty bad wings. They've got some stuff that's really, uh, what, gothic? Weapon, mostly. Uh, but I think, like, thematically, they're pretty batty. <laughs> Batman intensifies. I'm gonna go build some wing tech up in here. As long as the hunts don't lane, I'm all for it. say though just uh, <laughs> marble dice scaling should probably be sufficient. You can probably take one out. I don't know if I can get both. And that's you know only getting half the popo is just bad and getting none at all. I really need to make a thing. I'm gonna make a thing that I can hit a button and a thing pops up and it's like <laughs> just... Oh my gosh Popo took one step and disappeared. This is ridiculous. I that's the worst, man. They need to they need to hot patch that shit. Alright, I am gonna <laughs> fly back to base and put on my horn so I can knock you. Oh, Alright, that's good. Yep, there you go. Let's say. I because <laughs> I you know, it's like I've had no I didn't know about the whole like Popo running off and vanishing into walls and stuff until we were all trying to kill them together. Because when I was playing solo, I would be like, 
oh, look, it's Popo, and I'd run up and smack him with my horn, and then they would fall down and die, and then I'd be like, thanks, Popo. Skin, skin, skin. Um, <laughs> so, their proclivity towards, like, you know, phasing through solid matter and vanishing was new to me. When in doubt, horn it out. I'm glad that Birdo missed me. I just went to go. Oh, our our locale up, uh, info got updated. I wonder what is going on now. It's because that's what it does when it cycles monsters. Monsters will run in and out, and that's the only limiting factor, right? If we don't kill Hulu before it wants to retreat, it'll retreat. Well, I knew that. It has the right and ability to do. But doesn't it but also... that's what that's about. Yes, but it, it's not just that, though. It also changes, um, what's it called? Outcroppings? Surges, and... Yeah. I think there's more to it, but that's the main thing. But yeah, so but what I was concerned about, though, especially since it's an expedition, was... Okay, well then what did that change? Like, do we have, like, a, um... Like a mining node outcropping now? Do we have, like, a honey one... Like, that's good information to know. I wonder if, uh, when that happens in the quest, if you can, like, go and look at it, and then it'll change. Look, you little shit! I'm trying to harvest the damn monster, but you get off of me. These assholes! These little shits are not letting me carve this monster. And they all need to pay. Um, I think in quest menu, it will show upsurges and what's available and stuff. Awesome. So when it updates, it'll change that info too for you? I believe so, yeah. Hell yeah. That's great, man. One way to test. Yeah, there is. Uh, though at this point, I guess all we need is those remote bros, right? Uh, yeah. Though we could just collect marble dice and go for it. Now that Kulu's dead and carved. I'm gonna follow Droob's delightful glowing red switch axe or uh, charge blade icon. It looks like a giant axe or hammer. Looks like a war, war axe, built two-headed war axe, battle axe. I was trying to say warhammer and battle axe at the same time. Which, in all fairness, a battle axe is a war axe. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't wrong there. <laughs> Just not normally what we call them. I really want one of the. I want one of the Chinese. Uh, big battle axe variants. There's a couple real cool ones. You know what I also want? I want a. I want one of those really big, all pipes, or like like a crow's beak. It's like a giant halberd version of a fucking pickaxe. Like a war version of a pickaxe. On a very long halberd. It's fucking rad. That'd be a real fun weapon to, to practice with. Alright, well, regardless, uh, when you're, whenever you're done, I guess I'm ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Were we picking up marble for a mobile? We should pick up marble, yeah. We need, we need our marble dice. Otherwise, how are we gonna get the good rolls? No marbles, yeah. no dice. You have to cheat otherwise. <laughs> Weigh your dice. <laughs> 
one of the best things in the world. It used to be you had to go and uh, you do an expedition, and if you wanted to finish the expedition at like the two minute mark, I think, they delivered like a paw pass ticket or something like that, and you would take it and turn it in at the end of the quest. In this one, you just go and select end quest wherever you are, whenever you want. You're just like, I'm done here. <laughs> and the cats swoop in and yank you out. You get your little, your little felling extraction team or whatever. <laughs> Let the good rolls dies. Oh man, well that there there goes me. All right, we are out and free. At your leisure, we await your arrival. And thank you, Savvy, for the tips. I am killing a couple of Anteca and will return as soon as they are dead. Excellent. Gosh, they keep just like launching me though. <laughs> Getting like comboed by a herd of deer. Nice. <laughs> deer, 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 deer. Oh, dearly departed. Cool, I got it. Exactly none of that in my life. Well, we're about to fix all of those woes. In the interim, Droop gave me the loadout of the lovely set that y'all have uh, conceptualized. And Wanya yeah, maybe jumped I in for a second. Don't even need these uh, quality pelts, high quality pelts, because. I think the piece I needed them for was legs, which is replaced by ingot anyway. Right. Yeah, that ingot, high rank ingot, Reeves is nice. I'm wearing the the low rank version of it, and it's just twice as good. Twice as nice. Twice as nice. It's got double the ingots, double the fun. Gotta get in it. So I can be ingot. I guess that's why there's an S. The first one is ingot. The second one's ingot S because it's ingots. So they doubled the ingots used. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just so funny too because like. Sometimes at certain points during the animation of sitting and waiting to eat when you're just chilling, you kind of look like you're just like a regular at the bar. You had another bad day at the office. And my dog is just sitting there behind me not making eye contact like, <sighs> here we go again. Could be walking me. But nope, I guess we're drinking. Am I... In the lobby, what happened? Did it kick me out to single player when I failed the journey quest? Oh, yes it did. Great. I think that maybe that was not the expedition. I think maybe that was Monster Hunter being a punk. Saying, you know what? Fuck you, Marble Dice. You don't get to join. We're going to throw you out of the whole universe. I think probably right. a lot of people didn't realize that Monster Hunter was like multiversal. It's like Marvel in DC, where there's like infinite parallel universes. And we're just like hopping into each other's universes to do shit. <laughs> um, also, there is a, uh, I guess probably a localization or maybe a translation error when you are registering an equipment loadout it asks if you want to save your item load oh weird I didn't notice that yeah that is probably a mistake in translation I would assume 
<laughs> Maybe initially they just like copy pasted it and then they forgot to change the <laughs> the word. <laughs> Happens all the time. I would imagine it probably does. That is definitely something you would know a lot more about than me, but in my experience playing video games, I've definitely seen lots of things that would indicate that's probably an issue. <laughs> Alright. I was so happy to see Temper finally pop up as well, and it was like, oh man, now you really gotta build that Bogun set. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's my goal coming up very quickly. I miss my gun bees. Besides, I'm not the only one that's got a horn thing going on. take his helm off to eat or their helm because there are definitely some really funny like prior monster hunters where you have this ridiculous like gigantic like crusaders great helm looking thing that completely covers your head and you're like nom 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 it's like wow how's he doing that it's impressive Even the Mandalorians never figured that one out. That's why they can't show a meeting. It's got a tube that runs into the helmet. <laughs> that they choose not to animate. You've seen Rogue it's gross. <laughs> Though, you know, you're actually right. The um, They specifically go into detail about Boba Fett in the books and how he has like a tube in his helmet that's like got neutral paste like real basic nutrient rich ration paste just in case and he also has a whole bunch of controls that are like he can manipulate with his tongue and breath inside his helmet Your face, just in case. It's right, exactly. Which, there you go, Billy. You just made a whole slogan. Now we just need to make a product and a company. So I need to call him Gyrodit or uh, Gyrodotus now to make sure that I'm just wrong. I, I mean, you can pretty much call him whatever and be wrong with a name like this. True. Well, it's just like my insistence on Lagiacris. <laughs> Lagiacris? Bullshit. That's a laggy. That's Lagiacris. <laughs> I'm Jira, but he's helping us kill, uh, Gajow, so, maybe he's friend. Yes, kill those Gajow for us, Mud Dolphin. Oh, apparently the Switch Axe completely destroys the school. It's like the Switch Axe just completely destroys everything? I mean, maybe? I don't know. Just... Supposedly, I mean, according to, uh, Gaijun! 
is like a lot of people don't like this guy. I get it, but like I've been using switch axe and having a lot of fun, and man, it destroys this. Thing. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'll remember that for later because he's really annoying for me right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's not exactly hard to hit in the head with the horn, but uh, kind of annoying still. So many times that he just is like, oh, you're about to smack me in the face if you didn't hit. I'm just gonna like kind of dunk my head under the mud for a second. I like the map. And I'm like, not at all. Thanks for asking. Damn Pisces River. Apparently it seems a lot more hyperactive than the world. Uh yeah. Not cut. Okay. Unfair. Unfair, I say. What a sad tale. Does anyone know yet how Sonic Barrier works? I think it's just a damage shield. Okay. That makes sense. I was hoping it actually had like an earplug bolstering effect, but... It may have some interaction with staggering, and might be totally broken, um, but I don't know the details. Me either. You need up. I want to believe it's amazing and awesome, but I don't actually know, because I'm not sure how it works. Watching me drive my dog, you'd never be able to tell whether I was sober or not. <laughs> and again, for everyone out there that, that knows and has been following my streams and I've talked about how terrible I am at driving games and racing games, well, now you're getting to see a little proof of concept when I try to pilot my dog. <laughs> Slamming into walls. Pilot your dog, what is this? I'm yelling out. Oh god, that's a show. I I I can't say anything. I've only seen a little bit. But I was not impressed. Not a fan of the Evangelion. I'm like the most uneducated on the topic anime snob you ever made these. So, take anything I say about anime with green salt. Like I, for example, completely adored and was obsessed with One Punch Man in season one. And was like, oh my god, this is so great, and I'm so excited because I haven't gotten to have an anime to look to in so long. And then season two came out, and I was like, yay, more One Punch Man, I love this show, it's awesome. And then everyone else in the world was like, season two is fucking trash, I fucking hate it. And I'm just like, oh, I like it a lot. <laughs> well... Say I'm glad somebody did, so that maybe it'll get better again at some point. But at this point, I don't it really probably have it, any over desire for that to happen. I mean, I can. I'm an artist. It's very easy for me to look at season two and objectively say season one is way higher quality in terms of animation. 
But, I mean, I play 8-bit games all the time. And, like, the lower quality of the animation by no means ruined Season 2 for me. I still love the story and everything that was happening and was really invested in it. Yeah, I think there's a big difference between low fidelity and low quality. And the NES graphics are good. True. They're just stylized and low fidelity. Yeah, what no, I get that. Do it's just bad. I absolutely get that, man. I, I really do. Like, I'm not... I'm, there's no judgment here. I'm just saying my own personal perspective is that, like, usually bad, like, CGI, bad graphics, bad animation, stuff like that, it really, it doesn't take me out of it, if that makes sense. Like, there's, there's tons of movies that people are like, oh, man, and then this happens, and they show, like, a really terrible, like, CGI part, and it's like, your brain might not have, or you might not have noticed, but your brain did, you know, like the Mr. Plinkett. Um, and I'm like, yeah, but it didn't ruin it for me. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I am bummed though. I mean, God, I wish I would love to have seen season two at the same quality of animation as season one because season one was like some of the best animation I've ever seen in my life. I checked out almost immediately and then just read the manga instead, which was super good in the heart of the manga. Yeah. It is, yeah. I, I read, I've been, I started reading the manga too because I got really into it. <laughs> I was like, I want to know what happens. Uh, so I actually read uh, season two of the manga before I watched season two of the show. And yes, I know that's not how we use terms, but to be clear, I read the story arc that season two covers in the manga before I watched the season two of the show. Um, and, it, and yeah, I just it didn't it didn't take away at all from the show. So I'm I'm lucky, I guess. I'm just lucky in that regard that that kind of thing doesn't really bother me too much. I was just really happy to have a show that I really enjoyed, and I was really excited to see where it went. And I'm really hyped to see where it goes from here. Hopefully it continues. And hopefully they do a better job on it next time around. Maybe, maybe everyone in the world being so pissed about the quality will actually make them step up. Here's hoping. Because God, it's good. And that, oh, the intro, the intro to season one has to be like the greatest animated show intro of all time. <laughs> like, episode one. What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> of Saitama's power, and I'm just like, what? Completely missing a point. You're missing, no, they did. They did reveal it. <laughs> it's exactly what he said it was. <laughs> That's the whole point, and I don't ever want to see it. I don't ever want it to be anything more than that, because it'll ruin everything about the show. <laughs> Need that, and 
but going out of the way to explain it can very easily distract from everything else going on. Yes, 100%. And in the case of, of One Punch Man in particular, uh, it is actually really important as I know. It's really important that it doesn't make any sense and is completely absurd and ridiculous. Yeah. Because it's a joke. And it's a parody of a trope on anime protagonists. <laughs> Where it's like, there's no reason in hell they should be this powerful. They haven't done, like, what? It doesn't make any sense. And it's like, yeah, exactly. That's the point. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Which is why the episode of uh, Dragon Ball Super... Where they bring in, uh, what's his name, Dr. Lump or whatever. And like, what I forget how to pronounce her name. Ariel, Ariola, or what, the, the robot. Yeah, the robot girl. And, and Vegeta gets his ass kicked by her. And then he cuts her head off. And Goku's just like, oh my god, Vegeta, what did you do? And he's like, I didn't mean to. And then she just puts it back on and screws it on, and then, like, knocks him, like, out of orbit or something. He's like, I am never fighting a joke character again. And it's like, yeah, exactly. It almost feels like that episode of Dragon Ball Super existed because of Saitama. Because now everyone wants to say, like, well, Goku would, you know, Ultra Instinct Goku would beat Saitama in a fight. And I'm like, no, he wouldn't. They already did that, and it was the Arale episode. Yeah, it's like no, he wouldn't. Why? Why would? Why would Goku be able to beat One Punch Man in a fight? He's One Punch Man. <laughs> it doesn't matter how powerful his opponent is; he can beat them in one punch. <laughs> That's the whole point of the character. <laughs> He'd beat Superman in one punch too. <laughs> It just cracks me up. There's some people that just don't get it, and they can't stand, quote, quote, their character to lose. Um, I don't think that the dude has answers. It's a move. Gorilla Warfare. <laughs> or like, I, I don't know. It's probably a pun you can make there, but I don't. Be too bad. It was a thing. Yeah. I mean, his his tactics are a little muddy, but they're clear to him. <laughs> Just trying to muddy the water to keep us guessing. Yeah, actually, uh, that he was he was pulling a bunch of uh, Sun Tzu art of war kind of nonsense up there. Like, oh, and I, I gotta I gotta say something too because you know it's like I may have only been uh, you know officially formally a martial artist for like going on thirty years, but I've I've effectively been one my entire life in the way that I think, in the way that I've always been. I mean, I was I was building swords and sword fighting with my friends in the streets when I was in the streets. You know. uh, and I'll tell you one thing. You learn a whole lot more, and you grow a whole lot more from losing a fight than you do from winning. You don't, you don't... I wish I could quit jumping over the monster when I walk out. I know, I do that all the time, dude, especially with the horn. <laughs> it's got some really amazing launch attacks, but, like, they travel farther than I think they're going to. And, uh, I always wind up, like, overshooting them or something. Or the monster is like, I'm gonna slightly turn my head right now. And I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. Have you both seen the Justice League? Yeah, the, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, but I mean, not the Snyder Cut, but you've seen the, at least, like, the theatrical version? Yeah, I was gonna say, I've seen the theatrical version, yeah. but I don't remember. Actually. Okay, 
But remember the uh, the part where they're all fighting Superman and they resurrect him, and like the Flash comes running up on him, and then okay, you yeah, see that. Superman like turn and see him and like look at him, and he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and then Superman like throws everyone off and comes at him. Like that's what it feels like sometimes. It's like I come flying in there with my horn, like I'm gonna bash you in the face, motherfucker. And then he like he kind of like lightly turns his head, and I miss him, and it's like he's looking at me the whole time as I'm like. Completely stuck in my combat animation, and I'm like, oh no, oh no! <laughs> Insert Barry Allen sheer terror expression. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Is this guy susceptible to pitfalls? Probably. Want me to drop? Did he capture anything? I think he's damn close. I think he certainly uh, beat the shit out of the bull. I got a trap right here. Oh, it's true. I'm going doggo is. Oof. Maybe he's getting knocked down. Oh, you have a trap. Like, does it not signal when you drop a trap anymore? I guess not. He's like right there. Let's say he's like right on it. Yeah, I figured Thanks. it. What was I saying earlier, Drew? Regarding. Regarding my hunter sense. Oh yeah. Uh it's top tier? Is that the weird the phrasing you use? I think I can say that. I think that I am the least skilled of my whole hunting party, but I think that my instincts are top tier in terms of where monsters are and damage. Maybe it's because I played uh, Speed Setup Trapmaster for so long. Regardless, my trapper sense was tingling. Suppose. <laughs> We have broken pretty much every part on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was busted the fuck up. And was not happy with us. Give me one hot sec. I'll be right back. I gotta pee. Y'all keep just being awesome. Not that you can help it. Ingot, yeah. Ingot, God. See, I guess it depends on what it takes. This rank, Moodroth, Baroth, Volvi, Bisha, Ten, Kuke, Kuke, Viserios, Rathian. Largely unimpressed, I have to say. The monster selection, the rank below HR4 was way more impressive. Classics like Zenogre and Tigrax and Diablos. I missed the first half, but I heard the second half, and I think I get what you were saying. But yeah, Unimpressed. I think it's because we're at a weird point. Part. Dragonite, Gracium, Monster King Bone. Hmm. Do you not see any of those pieces? Oof. 
Where'd you know it? Uh oh. They all have to use these. That's probably the key ingredient right. that shows it. Let's get some of that. Marble Dice needs its Lyceum. Wasn't that a bad sci fi show at some point? Uh oh. Oh, did I just sit on one of my throwing stars? Nope. Something else. Okay. Perhaps I've hidden too many weapons in too many places. And of course, when I say hidden, I'm laughing because it's like, it's not an intentional hide. <laughs> oh, it's a nocturne. Hey, buddy. Yeah, well. So we need to focus on getting that kind of stuff, huh? I hope I did not sit on Chuck Tesla. Chuck Tesla? <laughs> what? What is Chuck Tesla? Is that like a, is that Elon Musk's uncle? Who's also a taxidermist? He's a space taxidermist. Premier employee of uh, Space Force. Every ship in Space Force has a space taxidermist so they can preserve aliens and bring them back for the Space Museum. <laughs> um, I mean, Nocturne, I'm sure that white sharpness exists, but at this level, but I don't have it yet. I'm also not expecting to get white, white sharp on a horn anytime soon. Nor purple, for that matter. Did I don't think purple's ever been in higher range. I was, gonna, I was actually, that was exactly what I was going to ask, Marble Dice. I was like, actually, has purple ever been in high rank? If it would, if it would have been, it would have been like only on like one weapon or two weapons of different types at the very, very top of a tier, and it would have been like a hair's width that immediately vanished. Yeah, pretty sure perp was a G. It's always been a G thing. But hey, G's coming fast. They're not fucking around with that on this one, apparently. Which is exciting. Uh -huh. Oh. I wonder what happens if you build a dango set, a regular order, that's composed entirely of things that you never see. Let's find out. Oh, so creatures. many bubbles. <laughs> what are rare crafty creatures, guys? Uh, I think that's probably the rock lizard. Oh. And the spray raven. And like the fire thing. All them that give you like a direct big boost bonus. And neat stuffs. That's kind of cool. It's called Call of the Wild. <laughs> Alright, let's try this. I'm going to put on... I don't... Where's that? Where did they go? A moxie somewhere. There it is. So, if you see them from flooded forest, sandy plains, maybe? 
That sounds sexy. Crap. I was hoping. Here, we're going for this. We got uh, Fortune Caller, Moxie, and Weakener. Go, go, go. Alright, Felling's tearing it up. I really want to learn um, that Dango Chef's knife technique, though I'm pretty sure that actually uh, Marble Dice has that as a longsword counter at some point. Got a couple of them, yeah. It's like a very similar animation of like almost like a, a, a Chrysogrim or Yasutsuna animation of multi slash. Yeah, it sounds like the, uh, yeah, I counter. That's pretty cool, dude. As opposed to the silk bind counter, as opposed to the foresight slash counter. <laughs> right. Which is awesome. I, I, I love the fact that Longsword has become a counter weapon. Granted, I've played Longsword very, very little. It's probably one of my least played weapons. But uh, just thematically, I think that's really cool. What's your opinion on that? I like Longsword. Um, it, I think the counter mechanic fits it pretty well and gives it a pretty unique niche. Because it used um, to be much more just like a long weapon with like a gauge that you built up, right? And it's become like increasingly more counter focused. Yeah. So basically, it's. I mean, originally it was kind of just like a slightly more mobile uh, great sword that didn't charge and had like a building. Right. That's gauge what I thought. Mechanic. Massive range. Yeah. Um, and then it's, you know, supposedly it is. It's more a more mobile great sword because it can move on sheath pretty quick and it can do the uh, what they call it the fate slash which moves your changes your position while attacking so it's a little bit more fluid a little bit more mobile and then the counters kind of add into that that's awesome i know that you've been a little underwhelmed in some regards with longsword thus far how do you feel about the counter damage itself though it is hard to tell because it's all multi-hit. So, um, you know, with this sword and horn buff, I feel like the good hit zones for some of the big multi-hit stuff are doing probably 30 damage, 30-something. 30 um, okay. And there's like four, six, eight hits. I don't know. Okay, that's I don't know how think. many of them So if you get a good zone, which is tends to be really hard to do, um... You can do quite good damage, like a few hundred. Nice. Um, perhaps. And, uh, yeah. It doesn't feel as bad as it used to. Uh, I don't feel underpowered, really. Good. Well, and that's what I was worried about, is that, that they accidentally, like, kind of nerfed longsword without intending to but it does seem like the kind of weapon at least thematically and, and I'm not sure if I agree with this in terms of game design but at least thematically it does make sense that maybe it's a, a weapon that like in the early game it kind of needs certain elements that just aren't there early game so maybe it kind of is underwhelming but then late game it really shines I've never really had that experience with Longsword. It's always been a very uh, reliable, no skills required type of weapon. Interesting. Um, okay. Because I got the opposite. I didn't. I because I didn't know. I like I said. I I'm not very familiar with the weapon. I played it very little, and the little bit that I did play was under your guidance. Um, yeah, back in the day, I used to really like earplugs on Longsword because. Good damage requires having a spirit gauge built up, and the spirit combo is super slow. Like, it's honestly worse than landing a great sword charge attack. Right. 
Um, however, in later generations, why am I attacking Jaggy? Because <laughs> it's um, <laughs> In later generations, not only have they given you a lot more opportunities to land your uh, gauge level ups, you've just got easier setups and more routes for it. Um, but they also have given you a bunch of counters, so you can counter through roars. So I really don't feel like earplugs is very worthwhile on Fallen Sword anymore. Cool. Well, that's actually really cool. A lot cooler than getting charged by Arinopos and then getting pooped on by Volvodon. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of that, I didn't even pay attention. Are we here for Volvodon? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I figured since everyone was right here where Polvadon is, but you know, just make, making sure. Also, this is a fairly large one, isn't it? I should. Maybe. Wah. I mean, maybe not. I forgot you. to eat. Uh oh. Is that something you can, like, go do and come back? Damn. So we found that, though. Yeah, but this this bolt is kind of kind of big. Sometimes this monster is uh not really too much taller than I. Ow! Wow. Oh my. That was surprisingly damaging. <laughs> I'm impressed, Bulbadon. I admit that really hurt. So this is your uh this is your. Bulimic Armadillo. <laughs> you know, run in the mill. Oh, I'm gonna die. Wow. Wow, that combo. Uh, yeah, self improvement is just self improvement. Um, the the one of the biggest boons about self improvement is that it allows you basically. Horn wants to be out all the time. So self-improvement, one of the most important elements of it is it gives you a movement speed buff. So you run almost as fast with your horn out as you do uh, running with your weapon sheathed. Which is a kind of a big deal and is really important for the horn. Self-improvement does more than that. But m what it does more than that changes every iteration. And I'm not actually sure what all self-improvement does in this game, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, maybe one of my buddies here can tell you more about that. Do either of you know? It's not. Boost movement speed and prevents your attacks from being deflected, by which they probably mean that it uh, decreases the likelihood of your attacks being deflected. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's really good. Um, because, uh, uh, it, uh, and we talked about this, I think, in like the very first stream I did of Monster Hunter, where attack deflection is a really big deal because, uh, well, for one, if your attacks get deflected, it means that you're beating the shit out of your weapon, and it drains its durability very quickly, but much more importantly, you can't do combos, because you bounce off. So it staggers you, and you like flinch and get knocked back, and um, it's not a good thing. I think that deflector, right, is the, the food skill that makes it so, if that happens, it doesn't decrease your uh, sharpness so quickly. Like, it, it helps with durability issues. Yeah. But then there's, wasn't there also, am I crazy, or is there also a food skill that makes it so, or no, I'm thinking of, like, what is it, Mind's Eye or something? No, Mind's Eye is weakness. There is a food yeah. ability, though, that, like, lets you strike yeah. through, right? What you what? Like, like, uh, if it was normally, uh, it would deflect you and bounce you off. It, like, you hit through it. 
Yeah, that's mine's eye. It is mine's eye. Okay, cool. Well, my memory's terrible, so I always have to second guess myself and be like, wait, which ability was which? Um, so, yay, me! Alright, uh, someone in chat, give me a gold star. <laughs> I remember the thing. And before you give me too much shit, Marble Dice, no, that's not actually a command I have. <laughs> Though maybe <laughs> it should be. <laughs> that's Maybe that'll be something when we get to affiliate that I should have. Where my chat can give me a gold star because I, w I was not a dumb. As our good friend uh, Lee would say. <laughs> I was not a dumb. I mean, Bulimic Armadillo is a great punk band name. Cold Star, you got Uh, I'm not about to do I can't play with the net code, but it's not even that code likely, it's probably just my fucking internet. Oh, damn it. Are you getting lagged to hell? Droob's been having some issues. Yeah, no. He's teleporting, like, half of the move somehow. Let's, uh, That's after... mildly terrifying. Yeah, that is, uh, after this... Yeah, I think I'll just put the router and see if that does anything. I don't know, but... Okay. Well, uh, before you go, after that, let's, uh, for the next fight, let's make you the, the leader. And see if it helps. Going to employ the scientific method, B. Because I think right now we're all in my, my game, right? So we'll, we'll make it Droob's game and, and see if that works out with the issue. So this is a, this is a different Wolfie, right? Oh shit, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's smaller. Much smaller. I did not realize we were in a multi-bully fight, but now I see that we are. It's the, yeah, it is a two-bully quest, so both are the correct monster. Which is good to know. <laughs> yeah, Savvy's over here running her internet on a one-legged hamster wheel. Which, here in the Beehive, we are all about. Bye. Uh -oh. What, do we want a trade win? Is that two? Oh. oh. We're, we, we're double mounted. I don't know what we should do. Maybe we should just, uh, <laughs> I should beat up on you, and then we should wall both of these? Uh, or knock them both into each other on the count of three. Which might be a bad idea with like you see. Probably wall, yeah. That's actually hilarious. Did we... Wait, where are you guys? Oh, you're over there. Well, oh, so I'm so I'm still over here by myself fighting new moldy, and I'm missing all the fun. It's me. Yeah, you miss you miss double rodeo. I'm so sorry, Bees. I failed you. My fellow new blooters were doing awesome shit over here. We didn't, we didn't get to see it in my life. Dang it, dog! <laughs> Blocked a projectile and ruined my counter. Was it my dog? I don't remember. It may have been Kappa Dog. Oh, Kappa Dog's, uh. That's true. Ah! I'm getting killed. Reginald. Killed. Reginald is fancy pants. I'm going to prioritize fanciness on my buddies. I mean, it needs to be fitting. 
after all. How would you all feel about a damage trap? Uh, I always feel fine about damage trap. I like to do damage traps. Also, I have bombs and I'm not sure. Cool, yeah, I'll just grapple like out of the trap. That's fine. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, wee! Who done it? <laughs> and Armadillo is super into trust balls. <laughs> he trusts he's gonna fall right on top of one of us. Tear up a little bit. <laughs> it's not a pun, but it, it needs a, it needs some kind of recognition. <laughs> drop drop one for Nocturne specifically. <laughs> that really tickled me. I'm as pink as my helm. I can't believe I got a force like counter off of that. <laughs> That's hilarious. He did go up and land. What's up? Oh no, you were gonna. Oh. He did the uh, bounce up and then land, but he was like in the corner of my screen when he took off, and I'm like, uh, guess that direction. And he landed on me and. My hunter somehow managed to go the correct direction for the follow-up and connect with it. I just got sharded on, and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> that was disgusting. They really amped that animation, and it's awful, and I hate it. Juicy. Is that yuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Nim just got kicked. Son of a bitch. We just lost group. Well, he warned us. Um, also, 444 as the pun count with three things going on. I feel like that's like a tri divine number. That's like a triple triple. That's some multiversal divine number stuff going on. I don't even know what to think about that. <laughs> Down in the dumps, are we, Sadie? God damn it. Well, and I just. Back hopped off a cliff. Alright, great. Well, that's what happens when you get your pants shit by some giant monster. Bet this Volvi is pretty close to Cap. Yes. Um, I think... <clears throat> Do I still have a shot trap? I should, maybe. Nope, I forgot to update my armor set. Fuck. Okay, so... I am unfortunately a trap down. I do have trench. If you have a trap, you can... End it. Is that a shot trap or is that? Yeah. Okay. I guess he's not there because I just drank him. He's must be close, but unfortunately not close enough. <laughs> I've officially peaked. Alright, well, it was a good run. We were so close to affiliate. What a bummer. I guess we peaked here. 
Wow, still not limping. No. Uh, he is a big boy. Oh, he just... Wait, what? Did the little one just roll it? Was that a changing of the guard? That's not my bully. I was going to say, yeah, that was the little one just was like, Now it's my turn! <laughs> nah! And we're like, nah, fuck you. And he's just like, man, why wouldn't it take me seriously? I do use the target camera for when monsters fly past me on charge attacks, but honestly, the most useful part of the target camera is keeping track of which of the two people get monsters with the one killing. <laughs> right, exactly. No, absolutely. <laughs> that was just really funny, because it, it really did kind of, for a second, look like our Volvodon rolled off the screen and then came right back like, I was just waiting for your teammate to get kicked. <laughs> I was like, you son of a bitch. But actually it was his uh, understudy <laughs> coming in to relieve him. Oh, life powders are no longer impaired by uh, sharks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, apparently. So I can heal us with a life powder right now, and I'm going to because I just got butt slammed. And that's the only way I can heal myself <laughs> without, you know, health regeneration on the horn, which, considering yeah, everything that's going on, is a little dangerous. However, oh dear. Okay, I was a little worried for a second. Go have more. Okay. I had to play it safe for a little bit there, but now we have some uh, health regeneration and rock in there. And uh, hopefully I'm not gonna just fucking get completely destroyed in the here in a second. So I'm a little bit terrified for the moment. Control Don is actually impressively damaging and uh, scary. I wish I had another trap. Oh wait, I guess we could do something. I keep forgetting that's a thing you can do now. Andy Grant. <laughs> there are a lot of land sharks in Monster Hunter. And the Zeta are fully approved. Wait a minute. You're not that land shark that you've heard about, are you? No, man. Man, I miss loving Jimmy Chase. Why do you have to turn out to be such a dick? Oh, girl, through that. Oof. <laughs> How about you punch that pillar instead of me? Out of the okay, it did not come out. I was gonna say he flinched out of like a half of my big combo. He didn't get him. I don't like how the KO animation is like a standing animation for some monsters. For some, yeah. For him, yeah, I don't like that either. Who was it? There was another one we fought just recently that did that too. I don't think he was. He is so good. There you go. Oh, he is, is that there. shiny that's still here? Looks like no. Well, again, nocturne savvy. That's just why you have to separate the art from the artist. Otherwise, you're not going to have any art left. Sadly. At least not enough. Art comes from pain. A lot of the time. Or at least a knowledge of it.
Unfortunately, that means a lot of artists are broken people. And broken people break people. However, some of the most beautiful things come out of the worst situations. So, I think that's why artists are artists. I do think, though, it, it does behoove us to go out of our way to find artists that are not broken. And try to loft them up. But it doesn't mean we should eschew art. That was done. That were. That was, you know, made by broken people, because art is subjective. At the end of the day, just you know, go out of your way to make sure that they don't get supported by it. If there's an if there's an artist that's a terrible person whose art you love, make sure you pirate it, <laughs> so they don't get anything for it. Demonetize. Exactly. Demonetize those fuckers. But but you know. The, once the art is out, and I'm an artist, so I can say this. Once the art is out there, it doesn't belong to the artist anymore. So take it. And I'm an artist that is trying to sell art to make a living, and I'm telling you that. So take it with a grain of salt. Right, exactly, Nocturne. That's my secret. I'm always broken. What amuses me is how many people that are like all about the military and the American government are huge fucking fans of the Hulk and he's like their favorite comic book character. And I'm just like, did you ever read the Hulk? <laughs> His number one enemy for the longest time was the American military. <laughs> All of the old, the early Hulk comics and cartoons, and even the television show, and even the fucking Hulk movies, were the Hulk destroying the American military. <laughs> Cracks me the fuck up. <laughs> what are you people on? When you're in danger to the entire planet and the whole world wants you dead, yeah, you're not a friend of any government. It's like the whole point of the Avengers and the Sokovia Accords and everything is that, like, all the governments of the world are concerned about the Avengers acting bilaterally without any kind of oversight. Because they don't respect nations they respect their own sense of justice. Which is why in the real world, the Sokovia Accords are totally called for. And Captain America is an out-of-time idealist. And Tony Stark is absolutely right. They are like living weapons of mass destruction and they absolutely 100% should be regulated. <laughs> Now, me being an idealist says, no, I would love to have Avengers that would protect the planet and take out a bunch of bad guys, right? But people in power and governments are like, I don't want fucking assholes, I don't know, coming in here and fucking with my country's seas. <laughs> That's totally reasonable. Damn it! I immediately got sharded on again, right after I fixed my problem. And I'm paralyzed. Did he just what? I think I bombed somebody, but I don't know if that's enough. I don't know, Drew, but um, you did get really quiet somehow. You see? Yeah, I just like you, just, you, you got a lot quieter on him for all of a sudden. You sound clearer, though.
I, I do think it's funny that um, DC thinks that it's so smart and like highbrow and down to earth while Marvel is talking about like geopolitical influence and the implications of heroes with no jurisdiction. And I'm just like, yeah, Marvel is like way more bizarre and way more quirky and way more silly and way more fun. And it's also way more realistic. Sorry, you're losing on every single front, DC. <laughs> like, you got nothing. You just don't. I don't even know what they're talking about. I'm talking about the movies, not the comics. The comics, obviously, DC goes into that shit a lot. But the movies don't. Even the Snyder Cut. You know what I may do, guys? I may make... I may do a stream that's just Zader's, uh... Zader's nuked cuts. Or nuke takes. Because what do they say? Like, hot take is the, the keyword, right? The kids use. I'm gonna be like, these are my takes that have been, like, delivered frozen, thought out, you know, reheated, refrigerated, nuked, again. Uh, one might call it a cold take, actually. Well, but it, but it's like, it's it, a cold take would be like, it's it's been a long time in the coming. This is like, I've been like, reheating it repeatedly. <laughs> but yeah. But I, I do feel like I need to go into great detail about why everyone's hot take and cold take arguments on MCU versus hyphen, not hyphen, uh, asterisk DCEU hot take are wrong. And there's no comparison. And Marvel is 100% completely superior. Because there's a shit ton of reasons. <laughs> And I've thought about it extensively over several years. And I'm sure everyone would love to hear me rant about that unintelligibly for hours. So so maybe we'll do that. And get some engagement because a lot of people will be really pissed off by it. And a lot of people will be like, yeah, you're right. And I'll just be over here like, well, Zader doesn't need validation from any of y'all. Zader's just right. What a slow moving roll. <laughs> Story of my life. You know, Marvel Dice, if you had a channel, you just would have gained a hundred BJJ followers. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Shark traps are really orange now. They are very orange. I'm glad it makes it very clear. I'm okay with it. I hate the color orange, but uh, it does make it very clear. That's right. <clears throat> How did that counter not hit? Oh my gosh. Also, what is going on with this Volvi speed? This is anomalous. Savvy. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not giving away any spoilers. Because I do think that anyone who's at least in any way, shape, or form interested, either in comic books, in general, the DC comics specifically, Marvel comics specifically, Marvel vs. DC specifically, but also just movies in general, editing, filmography, etc. Um, oh, dude, yeah, Nocturne, absolutely 100%. Sidebar, this is for you, Marvel Dice. If you ever decided to do uh, a channel or stream or something like that that just discussed video game 
like an educational video game analytics and metas, you would be amazing at that. I have learned so much about gaming my entire, well, since I've known you, like 21, two years. Um, you've taught me so much about gaming and game theory and thinking about games. Like, I think that you would be amazing at that if you ever decided to consider it. I think the amount of work that would be required to produce something that was up to my own standards <laughs> would be unreasonable. I agree. Um, I'm only just now getting into all of this and understanding how much work it requires. And my standard is higher than maybe you think it might be. And I'm constantly upset. And like, how do I improve this, right? I uh, What I'm going for here in my stream is a, a gung fu experience. And for any of you that are new that don't know what that means, uh, I got away from the part, but I didn't get away from it. I did the same thing! I was not close to the fart, and I was fine. And I was like, I'm gonna ride in here and punish this asshole. Pun intended. As oh, I might be dead. No. Not allowed. Oh shit. Okay, well. I was out of the thing and I couldn't do it, so yeah, I guess it is allowed. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, but no, my, my stream and what I'm doing and what I'm going for is nowhere near my, my standard. It's all about learning and growing. And um, Gung Fu... Gung Fu is, is, a, is a better, it's a more appropriate, and I'm still pronouncing it badly, so any any Mandarin speakers are going to be like, well, he's, he says something like, like fucking Waijin, Waijin, whatever. Waijou, blah, 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 white devil. Um, can't speak Chinese, can't speak Mandarin at all. But Kung Fu, as it's called in the West, as we call it, Kung Fu, it means great skill achieved through hard work over long periods of time. That's the long definition, right? It doesn't matter what it is that you're doing. The only thing that matters is that you are developing a skill through diligence. The whole point of my stream is adding to that element of Gung Fu, where it's like, yeah, we're trying to get better. I think a lot of streamers people tune into because they're good at what they do. I'm very intentional about it. I'm not that good. Except I'm good at getting better at what I do. Because that's what Kung Fu is about. It's about getting better. It's about the process. It's falling in love with the process. It's learning and growing. And being like, okay, well, the only way to get better at this is to do it over and over. And it's never gonna be up to your standard. Because the more you put into it, the more your standard is gonna grow. And the, the, the cap is going to increase, right? And I love that. Um, that's why I'm a martial artist. And and that's what I was saying earlier. Is like you, you always learn more from failure. I need to go back to camp. For a second. I'm going to do that because I made some mistakes. <laughs> And I got were made. Oh, oh, I've made lots. Speaking of Kung Fu and failing and learning from your mistakes. <laughs> made too many. Gonna go back. Let's refresh. The Thanks for that. Let's wait for the bigger walk. 
Oh, wasted files. It must get me up to this fight. And uh, the going back to camp and being able to use item stuff, that was all world, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's a really recent addition. Used to be that uh, you had to really know what you're getting into. You need I... And have a uh, layout and equipment and all that prepped. World made it way friendlier. And you could, in the middle of a thing, go and change. Lagush, Kamira. My point, though, about uh, Kung Fu, the idea, the philosophy, and as it, as it pertains to, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the, and the DC Cinematic Universe, is that Marvel did it right. <laughs> and they spent a lot of time, and they put in a lot of energy to make that universe work. They also built their characters up. They showed you how the how they failed and how they growed. They showed you their growth pattern. They showed you why they grew. Like they didn't just say, "Oh, and then I learned this." It was like this thing happened and I failed and I had to get better, right? That's Kung Fu. Ooh, we got a ride. Oh, yeah. So, what's for doing? Just walls? Walls? Yeah. Only walls. Wallflower. Make it. Can you run into that thing in the middle of the room? <laughs> that that thing right there. That, that, little, <laughs> that little mushroom stack, as I used to call them as a kid in Mario Brothers 1. That's the one. Yep. I saw that. And it's amazing it didn't break. Honestly. You, you'd think it would have broke. Also, this dude's probably capital, right? After that first one, I'm feeling like we might need a little more. Oh, or it could be just on dead. the very doorstep of death. <laughs> I was like, so, obviously okay. this guy's capturable. No, he's just dead. <laughs> Zarios is here and doesn't want us to carve his friend. Oh shit, right, carve. Oh, Bazarios. Please don't. <laughs> I think him appearing long is me. That's hilarious. But, but I think that's the biggest difference between... Um, Marvel and DC at this point. And this is like a non-spoiler spoiler. Zack Snyder's Justice League makes everything that Zack Snyder has done in the DCEU make sense. But it does by no means elevate DCEU to the level that Marvel has. Not even close. It makes everything good. It makes everything okay. But anyone that says Zack Snyder's Justice League is art, like, well, not art, but amazing, beautiful, awesome, oh, it's like one of the best comic book movies. No, they're fucking full of shit. They're just, no, it's way better. It makes sense. It makes everything else make sense, but it's not great. It's still disappointing in a lot of ways. And it could have been three hours and it was four. Give me a break. Four hours? <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. You could have cut a whole hour out of that. I'm
I'm not a fucking professional editor, and I could cut three hours out of that. <laughs> but it was it was good. I and I really enjoyed watching it. And watching it, I've watched it three times now. Right? And it never felt like four hours. And that says something. To be able to watch a four hour long movie three times and to say not one of those times did it feel like it was that long. That says something. It also says something that after watching the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, both Batman vs. Superman and Man of Steel made more sense and felt better. That says something. That's a good thing. And I'm going to give Snyder the benefit of the doubt and say I believe him when that was always his plan and he was always going in that direction. And I like that. I like that direction, and I think that he did a really good job. And I don't even feel bad about that extra hour of footage that easily could have been cut out by a good editor, right? I give credit where credit is due. But there are people out there that are like, see, Zack Snyder is just as good as the MCU. And I'm like, okay, now you've gone too far. Hold up. <laughs> no. Not even close. And the, the big thing about that is, again, the difference between, I think, DC and, and Marvel. And I'm not talking about the movies. I'm talking about the comics. They're different. They've always been different. Same writers, same artists, different mindset. Uh, one of my best friends who does not play games, one of my best friends you will not see, you will see a lot of my best friends up in here, like Marble Dice and Drew, but you will not see this one, who we'll just call Jay. And Jay summed up the difference between DC Comics and Marvel Comics is the best I've ever heard. And that is that DC are gods attempting to be men. Marvel Comics is about men that have become gods. And Jay is absolutely right. As a rule, that's kind of the, the base of it. And I think Zack Snyder got that. Like, watching the Snyder Justice League cut, it's like, this very much is that idea. Like, these are gods that are just trying to be people. I think he really understood that. He wasn't ever trying to be Marvel. And I think that's why there was a conflict and why they changed it and why they fucked it up. And they let Joss Whedon come in there and put like weird duct tape over all of his work and make that horrible theatrical cut of the Justice League that everyone pretty much unanimously was like, this is a really bad movie. <laughs> but that's the end of my spiel on that. So I apologize. Uh, Drew and... Be What you got? What are we doing? I'll be right back. Awesome. That's a great thing. Good point. Good good place to, to go on a break. So, hydrate, stretch. We'll be right back, and we'll be much more focused on the game. I apologize for the long comic book. Blah, 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 blah. No, see, Nocturne, though, I gotta say one last thing to respond to what you just said. Pun's great, and the pun deserves probably double credit. But I disagree with you, because the thing, the thing is, 
even though Marvel has always had like what ifs because when I was a little kid in the 80s uh, Marvel had a huge series it was like what if right like what if uh, you know oh god there's so many of them what, was, what were a couple of my favorites what if Spider-Man never got rid of the symbiote right stuff like that and everything goes totally off the rails and it gives you this perspective into a multiverse DC has always been like that DC has always been there are so many different writers and so many different takes like DC excelled at like multiversal weird ass this shit's happening over here like this it's happening over here like this oh remember how those events panned out over there not like that here this universe is totally different and super dark right and DC has also been like one thing you can say god damn it I didn't want to go on a fucking giant comic book tangent, but now I got to address this. <laughs> Damn it, Nocturne! <laughs> uh, the biggest difference, and I'm going to sum it up as fast as I can, is in Marvel, they had an intentional keynote keystone player that prevented everything that was happening in DC thematically story-wise and that is that for all of you that know who the Fantastic Four are Reed Richards Mr. Fantastic and Susan Storm get married ultimately the Invisible Girl later the Invisible Woman uh, they get married they have two children I think it's uh, Franklin and Valeria I believe is her name Franklin Richards is a multiversal reality warper. He's a mutant. The child of Reed and Sue is the most powerful reality warper aside from like I think three characters in all of Marvel Comics that has ever existed. He is basically God. He can manipulate, shape, create entire universes. And canonically, in Marvel Comics, for a long time, the birth of Franklin Richards shaped Marvel Comics because he was a little kid who was the son of the Fantastic Four and was friends with the X-Men and the Avengers and he didn't want anything to change and because his innate mutant ability was to shape all of reality on a multiversal scale guess what instinctively he kept everyone the same age for multiple decades and nobody knew it and his awareness didn't grow because his future self is omnipotent and omniscient basically and had neutered his child self through time he used his abilities to go back in time and cut off his child self's awareness so this could happen and this is why in the actual 616 Marvel canon in the comics characters did not develop or grow or change or age for literally decades this is literally all because of Franklin Richards. This is explained. This is canon. This is primary 616 Marvel canon. We got a quest up, by the way. Awesome. I'm gonna be right there. 
I feel bad. I hate to interrupt hunting. Explaining weird Marvel canon shit. <laughs> but, unfortunately, Nocturne asks too good of questions and they have to be addressed. <laughs> So, damn it, Nocturne. Why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta ask good questions? <laughs> I hope everyone learns something. You know what I learned? I learned I gotta eat my dango and go take a piss. So I will be right back. Please forgive. Somebody note down cat dance. I'm gonna go pee. We're gonna kill a monster. I hit it? I guess I did not, did I? Sorry for the wait, folks. Sorry. Who drops in Jura? This um, one unlocks the charge blade <coughs> switch skill. Neat. As for your question regarding what I was saying, Nocturne. Um, that was the official canon for a long time. It's not that it's been retconned, per se. It's the, the retcon has been retconned. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that the difference between Marvel and DC, at least as far as I understand, is that what Franklin Richards was doing is still a part of the canon, but due to bizarre reality warping, time travel, etc., 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 multiversal nonsense, things have happened. Right? And it's changed. But it's not like DC, where they're just like, and then a thing happens, and that universe ends. So they're different in that regard. Uh, but Marvel had like a static reason for that happening for a long time and DC didn't. DC had to repeatedly make other reasons so they could reboot their universe. And in a way, DC was just always a different universe, you know? Whereas Marvel was always the same universe until the ultimate universe. And then they started doing a bunch of other shit. And they're like, there's a bunch of other universes that are going on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And they got into that too. But. <laughs> and it's like one of those things where at this point you can't tell them apart. Um, except that Marvel doesn't feel the need to like reboot their universe every few years, whereas DC does. And they just did it again. Again, even though they've already rebooted their universe like three times in the last decade. <laughs> Which is really bad. 
space. It's like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> what are you doing? That's a little sad. What? No. Must have just ran out of iframes on that. By the way, too, I am all about you no know, problems in the money. After all, I am Trap Master Xander, uh, and uh, I, I always have lots of bombs. So, if we want to uh, just need to like, dom damage, damage trap bombing, I'm all about it. It's time for damage. <laughs> damage! <laughs> Get to the damage. I don't have bombs really yet. I'm super broke and been doing traps and potions for farms. No, absolutely. I have lots of all of you above. So I, I give no bugs. Actually, that's not true. I give lots of bugs. I enjoy bombing <laughs> and trapping monsters. Uh, I don't mind spending money on it. After all, I understand now how to make lots of money. So, I don't mind burning it. How do you make lots of money? Well, you, uh, specifically or generally? Okay, sure, specifically. Okay. What you do with money? Uh, specifically, you make a gathering set, as you know. You go to the lava cavern area, I think it was called. Lava caverns. Oh, good. Um, which is funny, because if it's in the caverns, it should be magma, right? But, um, you go there. You go on a very... Is it hard to hear me? I'm sorry. Uh, probably because my uh, mic is kind of far back for me at the moment, since I'm like reclining in my giant comfy chair. After this fight, I'll try to work on physically making it closer. I apologize for the uh, volume. But uh, you go to the lava caverns with, of course, your gathering set, right? You go up basically the northeastern side. You go into that cavern I was talking about where it goes up the northeast into a little, like, vestigial appendage that, like, branches off there in the northeast. You gather, like, seven different nodes. No, no, thank you, Nocturne. I really appreciate you telling me about the volume thing. Like, I, no one has said nothing yet, so I didn't know it was well. <clears throat> and, uh, then you sell a lot of shit. And... So you're... mining for money, basically. Yeah, but also, then, of course, you go into your roots. But specifically that, that, that area, that zone, that quest, all stuff you've done in every Monster Hunter ever. But apparently, you can make about 300k in about 10 minutes. You just wait for the, uh, the outsourcing, right? For outcropping. Like, oh, we got a, a mining outcropping. Okay, jump into magma caverns or lava caverns or whatever. Uh, jump on and go directly up this path on the northeastern front. Go into that little area. Gather all these nodes. Keep keep running in this. Like, work back to the main camp um, and gather 
can go back and gather more until it changes and the outcropping is gone, then do the quest. Then come back and it. And you're gonna make stupid amounts of money in a few minutes. And uh, for any of you that are like, damn Zader, how'd you figure that out? Because I'm fucking telling you what Gaijin Hunter taught me in a video he released like today. Because <laughs> that dude's got it going on and knows what's up and is, I've been following him for years. So... I'm not, I'm not telling you a thing that I figured out. I'm telling you a thing that somebody that knows a lot more about this game. And yeah, uh, G rank is coming soon. So getting at least to a comfortable place where we are like where we're gonna be in here and having enough money. So we're ready for G rank. Great. The fact of the matter is, you can always just go and do harvest quests and expeditions or whatever they're called. Harvests. Yes, how dare I give credit to a knowledgeable streamer and shout them out. <laughs> how dare I? <laughs> Everyone better unsub right now. Watch uh, Gaijin Hunter. He does very good content, and he's very in depth, and he just seems to be a generally good guy. I've also gained a lot of info from um, I don't know how he pronounces it, Eric's. I think it's spelled A R E. KZ. He's also very good. Nice. Yeah. Um, he's also very in depth and uh, has very high quality content. So, like, I could maybe think about not rolling through my hunting partners that are swinging their big weapons around in order to not get staggered. The entire screen was covered in dogs. I know, right? Okay, so I didn't actually know this. Um, I was talking through after the hunt last night, and Drew pointed out to me that I was still incredibly destructive, and I actually did not realize that. So I need to learn. What'd you just say there, Drew? You gotta say the whole thing. Don't, don't make it sound like I made you up to be a bad guy. No, 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 no. Okay, no, I was, I was gonna. Out of place. I wasn't done yet. I was, I was, I was saying it. I wasn't trying to make it sound like that at all. It's that. <laughs> yes. No. By all means, Drew was not making me out to be a villain or a bad guy. It was we were talking about the way weapons work. Um, just, just this is clarity for the stream because Marvel Dice and Drew both know what I'm talking about. Uh, but. One of the elements of Monster Hunter is that weapons disrupt. Like, you can disrupt the teammates. You can knock them around, you can trip them, you can stagger them, you can break their combos, right? Being masterful at your weapon and your role is all about spacing, timing, 
what hit zone are you focused on? Where are your people? Right? Um, when we started out in the first stream, it felt as though, me being a horn player, that the horn was amazingly not disruptive. And what I mean by that is that when I'm sitting here swinging this gigantic fucking thing around that I just like ripped off of some... Oh, I guess I'm actually using like somewhat of a, a normal streamed instrument. Like I have like a tail of an animal on me. It's not like a shrine pose. But regardless, I'm, I'm swinging around this giant massive thing, right? Um, and in prior Monster Hunters, it's like, well, you're swinging around a massive fucking club. Of course it's going to knock people around. But it didn't seem like it was. And I got the impression, at least initially, I was not being disrupted. Which gave me a false sense of confidence and security. Where I was like, oh shit, they've like vastly decreased the disruptive element of the horn. That's amazing. That's a super huge buff. After we ended the stream last night, Drew Boob and I were talking for a while. And he casually mentioned that I was knocking him around. And I was like, oh fuck, are you, wait, I've been knocking you around? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm so fucking glad you told me that. Because I didn't know that. I got a false impression. I got the impression that they drastically reduced the interruptibility and the disruptiveness of the horn. And I was really happy to hear that that was a thing. Because one of the things that is the most important in Monster Hunter and has always been there is that part of mastering a weapon is knowing your place and your spacing and not fucking with your teammates. Right? I was scared that they had gotten rid of that way, and they had all but removed, you know, hitting other players. So that's what we're talking about. By no means am I saying that, you know, I'm the bad guy or whatever. No, it's not about that. It's about like, oh shit, like, Weapons do cause uh, disruption. Bye. And it's also why you want to have a balanced party. For example, if all of us were using a hunting horn, well, for one, we're all using blunt melee weapons that do knockout damage. So we all want to be on his head. But that means we're all going to be knocking each other all over the place, right? You don't want that. You want to have someone in your party that can cut, that can do cutting damage, and cut tails off, and stuff like that. And you want to have someone in your party that's probably ranged, and can, can shoot people, right? Um, sword and shield is really good, not turn, as you bring up sword and shield because it's super close range and it's really quick and um, and it can like kind of weave around through their legs and through their body and trip them while you have a horn or a hammer on their head to knock them out and you get a great sword on their tail to cut it off and you have a gun, bow, whatever in the distance to you know, add to those elements, and do status effects or element effects or whatever. Break body parts that are in hit. Like, for example, on a, on a large monster that's hard to get to, you might want to have a gunner focusing on the back, right? Because it's really hard for a melee character to hit the back unless you're mounting them or you knock them down a And if you have monsters, it's not easy. And, and so that's really interesting and really important. And 
and I think it raises a lot of cool... It, it, it opens the door to a conversation about what it what you need to have in a game in an online multiplayer cooperative game to make it work well in a party right every element of being a party in a, in a party is really important in monster Hunter, including spacing so I love the fact that Horn has been buffed out the ass, but I was also really annoyed and concerned because I thought that Horn had got over buffed for a second because I thought they basically had removed or at least all but removed the drastic mitigation um, disruptive element. It turns out that's not the case. I have been knocking my party members around. I just didn't know I had been until Drew and I talked about it. Which tells me, well, I'm not playing this weapon anywhere near as well as I thought it was, and I didn't even think I was playing it that well again. So, I need to figure out how to get better at using it, so I'm not knocking my peeps around. Now I'm going to shut up for a second and intentionally yield the forum to Marble Dice specifically, because I've already talked to Droop about it. And I need to know what Marble Dice thinks about um, how disruptive I've been with the horn. Um, it's not very disruptive for the most part. The only time I run into trouble is when you're... It's kind of just like they're taking up space and playing songs, and I can't really see where you are because, you know, there's a million dogs everywhere. <laughs> and I'm trying to, like, walk or run through an area, and it's like, oh, no, this is Horn Zone, I can't do anything. Um, <laughs> which, normally, it's not a problem, because, like, you just don't well, normally there aren't walk dogs. through other hunters that are doing stuff, but it's been hard to tell where people are in this generation. I feel that way as well, actually. Um, I, I feel as though in every generation prior to this one, I always knew where you guys were. And if I was knocking people around, or if I was getting knocked around, it was my fault, right? In this one, I'm kind of like, well, I mean, I'm trying to be on its head. Like, I just knocked him out, which is good for me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I do agree with that. And I, I am glad to hear that... I specifically haven't been too disruptive. Um, Drew was saying it seems like a lot of the weapons have better super armor in this game, but Longsword has always had pretty good super armor, so if I'm like right. comboing, then it's not likely I'll get interrupted by something other than like an upswing, you know? Yeah, okay, that makes um, sense. And in regards to your comment, Nocturne, about a good archer is scary in this game, I hope so. I wouldn't know, because I've yet to see a bow. Yeah, I wonder uh, if it has much changed from World, because I really felt like in World, bow was basically like the top basis, one of the most damaging weapons in, the in like every scenario. Yeah. No, bow in World was amazing. Um... And I think I didn't play bow as much in the world as I did in I think it was for you. I got really into bow for a second. I was really loving it. Um, I don't think I ever did as much in Gen U or Gen. Cross or double cross for y'all in different parts of the world. But I do really love the idea of bow, and I really would like to play it in this one. But like, man, I just, my, the, look, here's the thing. 
Ever since the world in the world was top tier, but also like ridiculously end game skill set tier, like yes, you true. needed a laundry list of specific skills you to did. make bow into the powerhouse that it was. And it became awesome though. Oh my god. Once, uh, and, and this wasn't even like a top tier bow set by any means, right? But I had uh, a bow set that was like uh, slime slash blast focused. I guess blast is the name now. Um, and it did like the big, what is it, like the, you like charge it and you shoot it and it does a ridiculous amount of damage and like pierces and goes through. And it was like, it's not like top tier bow set, but oh my god, it did a lot of damage. And it was so sexy. Oh shit, Nocturne picking up fam from the airport. Alright, well have fun buddy. And uh, say hi to the fam. My love. Hopefully we will catch you soon. But yeah, I love that set. And I don't remember even what was that called. Uh, but it had at least a dragon piercer or something. And it was so fun. <laughs> Wasn't that one like the Asian inspired look too? Yeah, very much so. It very much had that like that classic like samurai longbow meditative draw aesthetic. Oh fuck. Yeah. Where you draw the target to you. For any of you uh sort of truth book fans like what Richard was working on, I think at the beginning of the second book. Draw the target to you. And it was really fun and really rewarding. But it was um, very niche play style and it was very limiting. And even though I played it a decent amount and I built more than one armor set around it, I never played it at a master level and I probably just burned DPS for our party. I could have probably been doing much better if I had just been, I don't know, spread or pierce bowing, or honestly, playing heavy bowgun, because heavy bowgun is my primary weapon. Uh, which is <laughs> Too low for the counter. Gotta love it when that happens. Yep. Gotta get low. And you know, if you're six foot under the monster, you're probably not too much. I like that regen. That thing is very nice to have. The health regen? Yeah. I agree. You're welcome. Was it time for walls? Do people want walls? Uh, I mean, I don't think we have a better option. Is there a wall there? No, there's and a wall. a wall there. And... A wall right there. So, FYI, you folks... You need to it back. Say what? Be kind, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for all you kids out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I guess I don't have any traps. I was gonna trap them, but oh well. I guess we just gotta kill him. Oh, oh I might. If you want. We can just yeah, kill him. Do you want a cap? I don't care. I was just thinking about maybe trapping him because, you know, fast. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to cancel the uh, camera cinematic? Uh, B. I think. B? I think so. One of the face buttons. It was start or plus in most of the other games. Yeah, I no, in this one it's like B or Y or something. I, think. I usually am just like wackety wacky whack on buttons and it's like whoop. It <laughs> cancels it. <laughs> Did you already have the switch scale on uh, charge plate, Drew? 
I doubt it. Well, you'll have to tell yeah. us what it is. Axe Hopper. I I wonder if that's one of the what um skills you could equip in Generations Ultimate. But I don't recognize the name. Oh, that makes it even better. It could be a reference to file expansion. different meaning. Oh wait, you know what? I just realized. I think I was able to actually afford my armor charm a long time ago and then just never bought it by accident. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, Mado. What you got for me? Aside from being adorable. For one, I'm going to play the lottery. Don't recommend it in real life, but in Monster Hunter, always. Uh, Marble Dice, do you have any interesting melding pot input? Uh, I haven't really looked into it yet, but my basic read on the situation is there are three or four at least different levels of melding. Um, I think they all take the same or similar materials, and there probably isn't a lot of point in uh, excessively melding until you get the best stuff at the end. Okay, that's kind of what I felt too, but I wasn't sure. If there's anything you want, then for sure meld it. That's what and I And if you want to do like a little bit to get some variety for whatever you have access to, that's probably a good thing. But uh, I wouldn't make it a practice to convert materials into uh, low rank trash thousands. Right. Cool. Okay. Good. Well, I feel a little better because you're basically kind of echoing what my my feeling was that I was gathering. Is there anything good in the uh, haze tier? Got a divine blessing, heartbreaker. I'm actually out of those potions. My God. Not all I see. I feel like the utility would be the stuff that I would go for. Um, what, like, the stun one, wherever it is. Oh, I guess it's time for me to start combining, huh? Was it not here? What? Yeah, sure, I'll make 202 of them. Yeah, sure, I'll make 190 of them. <laughs> I like the crafting system in this game. I feel like it's a minor, but great change. So do we know what the uh, ingredient quests do in this game? Do they unlock new ingredients? Or do they level some aspect of cooking up? No, I don't understand them. I'm going to remove myself from the burden of answering that question by saying I have no idea. I think 
there for the different skills that you can get. Um, where I think progression, story progression, is how you get the health up. Um, and then it might also um, alter the rate of success for the skills. <clears throat> that one's just a guess, though. Uh, Savvy, do me a favor and uh, text me that video. And we might look at that later. Because that's the thing I learned how to do at some point as a streamer. And that might be a good thing to do during, like, a break at some point. Here's a Rathian. Ooh, Rathian. We like Rathian. Can I? No, I'm full. Okay. Oh, wait. You know what? <laughs> Shit. I just realized I don't have... I need to make more traps. Nova Crystal, typically the dicey area. The dicey area? Sounds correct. Marble dice intensifies. <laughs> I mean, if there's a dicey area, we obviously have to go there. <laughs> For, for Did I robot? Because it's not what I think. Oh, what would you say? The icy area. Oh, icy area. Yes, that is a little different. But I mean, I see a lot of areas. I see shrine currently, <laughs> but. And yeah, in, in case there are any new viewers up in this channel, no, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> That's what you signed on for. Looks like it's time for Zader to buy a whole bunch of uh, trap kits. Hey, Mado. You got a sale for me? <gasps> you do. You sexy little <clears throat> shit. So, we should have access to the high rank, uh, what is it, Frost Islands? We could give that place a once over next. I also need, um, thunder stuff, so. But I'm, it's not a high priority. Any particular type of thunder stuff? Oh, that, sorry. I see, so Kezu probably, right? Yeah, Kezu and I think Capture. Oh, goddammit, Thunder Anus. Well, Capture's good, though. Let me go check real quick. I think maybe I can make some new stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. I do have my wish list. Which? My wish list items. But I haven't been, like, seeing notable pop-ups like in World and Iceborne. Well, look, sidebar, whenever I say World, I'm also talking about Iceborne because Iceborne is just an expansion to World. Same engine. I'm not going to say World or Iceborne. I'm just saying World. Throwing that out there. Uh, in World, on your wish list, the second you complete something that gave you the thing you needed for your wish list to be complete, it would pop up. Does it do that in this one? Because I haven't seen it yet. I get those. You get a little notification on the right side of the screen okay. when you collect it. And then also, I think, when you get back to town or in the quest clear details, it will 
give you another notification that frequently will get spammed and flooded off because you probably got so many notifications. Right. It was really obvious in World. Um, I haven't noticed it yet in this one, but that might just mean that I haven't actually completed a wish, wish list item yet. That's why I wanted to ask, because I was like, I'm not really sure if it works the same. I haven't seen it yet. There's a lot of inventory configuration that you used to be able to do in World that you can no longer do in this game. Some of it, I am glad that it's not a thing anymore, but some of it <laughs> I kind of miss. I understand. For example, it looks like radio wheel settings are not saved to the item loadout, which I do actually like because it was the interface for managing that was way tedious. And I almost never wanted to change my radial wheel, although I can certainly see why some people might want to, particularly when it relates to gunning and ammo management. Absolutely. Um, but with full radial wheel settings, I feel like you can probably usually just figure something that works for all loadouts. So nice. that's nice. And then also I'm glad you no longer have to do the item ordering in World, like in World, the, you could configure the default sort order that would get used for sorting your inventory. And like in theory, that sounds great, but in practice, it just meant the one that the game provided to you was garbage, and you had to fix it. And that was also saved on an item loadout specific setting. And there was no way to like know where items that you hadn't put in your inventory would get sorted. So like if you wanted things to sort correctly, you'd have to put them in your inventory, then change the order, then save the set. Yeah. One thing I do miss though is you could configure your item bar so that your fixed items did or did not show up in the item bar, such as whetstone, throwing knife, barbecue spit, right. fishing pole. If it were uh, in world, you had a fishing pole item, I think. Yeah. Um, you can't take those out anymore, and I like to take those out because it made it easier to use the item wheel. I agree. I just, I got the hang of the item wheel at the very end, and it was so funny because it was like, you know, especially marble dice, but. To a lesser degree, Drew, were kind of laughing at me for how long it took for me to get down the item wheel. But I finally started using it effectively, and then basically, we weren't playing it anymore. <laughs> I, I have been trying very hard to use it in this one from the beginning. Have we shit talked it in this one yet? Because I've been trying to get the de default to work, but I can fairly consistently do three plus times without being animation locked doing something else. Try to sharpen my weapon, and nothing happens. I just run around like a dick. <laughs> I haven't had any trouble with I it. Have to... I've found it easier to use. Them really? Than okay, I wonder if I. So do you use the action on release or action on pressing R3? I use action on release. Like I'm holding the button and I uh, hit the, the trigger, the analog up the direction I want the item and hold, keep holding the button and then just let go of the analog and it uses the item. And Take one, what about you Drew? Um, default, which I think is type 1, but I didn't think it was a release. I thought it was just, because I've had times where it would waste potions where I'm holding and trying to scroll through stuff and also trying to move the camera, and I know you're not supposed to be able to do that. Um, like, if you want to do that, you have to mess with a different setting, which I so, get at. Default you have is to be aware type of that 1. Now, and then you do that. And if you, you get the item when you release the right analog stick. Uh, but it is a little bit 
tricky with if you release the say what. But you know, okay, I've had potions wasted because I'm still scrolling through. Uh, hold on, I've had potions start being used with left bumper, and then just having the analog press, you know, to its maximum toward the item. Um, and so it's not being released yet, but it's still chugging the potion. And then it sometimes will sharpen when I do similar, but, you know, up for the whetstone. But it's not consistent. Interesting. That could be a uh, controller issue, so, uh, where, like, if you're dropping the uh, right analog signal, then it thinks you release it, when in fact you've just got, like, a, I don't know, a short in your controller or something. That sounds possible. Yeah, I hope it's not my controller going bad. I do too. Might try putting the joy cons on the thing and using those to see if it is still a thing. It's worth a shot. But that's not a comfy controller. But if it turns out that it is, we'll, we'll fix that. After all, I owe you a few birthday and Christmas presents anyway, so... Maybe it's time for you to just get a new controller. Uh, the only one... Well, no, I don't think... I don't want one quite yet, because battery is still pretty good on this, surprisingly. Like, for having been left alone for, I don't know, a year and a half or something. As if one could ever have too many controllers. That said, where the fuck did that armor charm go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I bought this son of a bitch. Where the hell did it go? It's up in here somewhere. It should be like right near the beginning of the list. I can't find it. Gosh darn it, bees. I done lost my, my thing. It cost me $24,000. It's no good to me dead. <laughs> oh, Savvy. You sweet spring child. <laughs> this inventory has only just begun. <laughs> I've only got five boxes filled so far in, in this. We're we are we are children. Just wait. <laughs> Yeah, I think usually we end at like around 30-ish. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. This is like tiny inventory for Monster Hunter. Well, I guess we haven't been forced to buy expansion books, have we? No, we yeah. haven't yet. I, we, we don't even have them available yet, do we? They probably don't exist. You probably just get infinite inventory. That's what I'm thinking. I think we just have infinite inventory now. World didn't make you buy them either. Which, that would be great. Because, I mean, you already have to buy all these armor and, and uh, offense charms. And then it sucked because you also had to buy, like, combination charms and inventory increasing charms. But it's like, okay, maybe just not with that. Okay, I'm stupid. I couldn't find my armor charm because I'd already put it in my inventory. <laughs> well, I feel silly. Um... <laughs> Wan Yan still, or isn't still around. 
right? Not in chat, no. Ah, okay. He he booked because, immediately because he was afraid of spoilers. Well, I Minoko like produces paper out of the air. Uh, if you're like standing at the counter, I just figured out what's going on. It, it's Hojo. He's like ninja papering to her, but the way that the game cuts down on resources, um, it's not rendering them until they get to a certain point within the character's view. Oh, wow. So it looks like the paper just materializes in her hand. Huh. That's kind of fun. And I think it actually does, like, disappear and then reappear. Yeah, I had no idea. You have shit in the quadruple digits. Well, excellent. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna shit, try it. Try. Try again. Wait, there was a better joke there, but my mind kind of broke and I just went for the three threes. One hopes you're not gonna have to try too hard on the toilet. For item creation, which is nice. Traps, the trinkets. There we go. The ball that comes. Now I see. This is great. What a nice little quality of life thing. That's great. That's that's really nice that they categorize them like that in the craft list. It took me a second to realize what was going on. I'm like, why can't I find these items? Oh, I'm in the wrong category. That's really nice, actually. Well... Jokes might always be a crapshoot, but at least when you have a marble dice, you can get around it. And you can add that one to the count. Tiny bar, you gotta fix your tiny bar. I my tiny bar is fucked. Does that mean that I can leave and eat and come back? You can fly back to camp and eat, yeah. I can fly back to camp and eat. That's right. Main camp. I've never eaten at main camp. Well, still can, so yep. rejoice. Rejoice! one eat at main camp. Uh, go into the camp and then eat a meal. Go inside tent. Yeah. Ah. Ah. I see. I thought it was going to be like World War. It was like, uh, because you have that little mm -hmm. like urn outside, or not urn, but. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. No, it's not like World where you eat at a 
special little uh, stool. Just do it in the camp like a savage, or in the tent like a savage. Right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eat Twinkies in my tent <laughs> by myself. Well, I mean, me and Reggie here. All right, Reginald, let's ride. <coughs> Too much. Too much. Mm -hmm. off. No. Is there another monster here? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, a double monster. Let's get this uh, launch party started then. Let's get launch that launch party. We're here for racking. Alright, so we did racking in, you're on the fruit monkey, so launch into Fuke if you can. Get those shinies. Danger be damned. There is there is no greater honor amongst our people than being killed gathering shinies. Okay. Carving tales. There is this bug.
also, I don't know if you know yet, Marvel Dice, but be wary because your dog will eat thunder, thunder beetles. <laughs> uh, what? I don't know what happened, but you know, there's like the dun beetles that are rolling thunder bombs. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, there's one of these thunder beetles over here. And Wanyan was like, oh, awesome. And he comes running over to grab it. And my dog runs over right in front of him and eats it. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's very much like when the, like a dog that like, it, like you know, there's a treat or there's something on the ground that you don't want it to have, and you're trying to get it. Dog's like, I'm gonna get it. Every time you reach for it, the dog kinda like, like, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, right. I need to have my, uh, my phone. To be correct. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm crazy, or maybe the timing is weird and it's so funky, but it seems as though you can flash bomb Baratheon out of the air even when she's enraged. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's ever been... Oh, cool. Okay, I forgot, and I thought maybe, like, when she was in rage, she was in rage. No. That's just the numerous remembering. It's just, uh, Diablos and, uh, Sonic Bombs. That makes sense. Okay. I was probably just, you know, judging the posing. Sounds like great. Doggos are best. 100% agree with that nonsensical statement. She's on to me. <laughs> oh no! That was an auto stand up at a really bad time. Ooh, that was scary. <laughs> that could have gone really, really poorly. Her wyvern sense was tingling, and she totally found me immediately when I got behind that wall and started trying to get
I, I've always felt as though the, the Rass have kind of a more notable tail cut. <coughs> more like, like harder to miss on the ground or like more distinctive when you see it or? No, more is like it's more impactful on your ability to fight the monster. Oh, like, sure, yeah. Like it actually reduces their ability to uh, whip you. Whereas, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. A lot of monsters is like, yeah, we cut their tail off, but doesn't really seem to reduce their capability to smack the fuck out of us with their tail very much. Mm -hmm. With Rathian, it's very notable. And Rathalos, too. Yeah, I like it when the park breaks actually lead to uh, uh, Weakened. demonstrable changes in the fight. Right, me too. Yeah, and it, it's definitely very notable, noticeable with the Wrath family. Very neat. It may keep them going into a tailspin, but more importantly, it keeps us out of one. Hence, all the more reason to get those tails off lickety split. But you do have to be careful. Um, one thing we haven't talked about a lot is the like flinching, the staggering, knockdown mechanics. And, um, and so, like for example, if you knock them up and down, if you sleep them, if you stun them, etc. You have to be careful because if you have an inopportune. Oh, it didn't actually take her out of the air, even though it hit her and she was in the air. That's yeah, they get some resistance to it. She's, she's, uh, she's up. Still blind, but didn't fall down at the time. That's okay. That's a, that's a tried and true traditional knockout. Because she decided to come over and scream at me, and I just smacked her right outside the head with a gigantic post I pulled off of some poor animal. <laughs> oh yeah, she's in a bad way. Do you want to go ahead and trap her or do you want to kill her? Uh, I don't want to spine. Yeah, she is definitely going to drop the trap. That's like two knockouts back to back in like three seconds or something. <laughs> I'm honestly impressed. I'm really surprised that wasn't a capture. Because she's in a bad way. Especially when it's knowledge that's carried over through the generations. Oh, I'm fine. I have plenty of 
kid. I've hardly had to use any. I have antidotes. I have full night mega potion. I just ate poison and make it my personal mission to bring herbal powders on every hunt, regardless of whether or not there are any poisoners, so that I always have herbal powder. I've yeah. already used all mine. Because I got poisoned a bunch. Absolutely understood. I would be the same way. I just don't have herbal powder yet, but I've had antidotes every night. Took a chunk off of that one. She really hurt me with that last hit. That was like literally she did. I think about 55 to 60 percent of my health. It was definitely over half. Uh, I thought that I had a second trap. Oh, then it just dropped. I was gonna say, she's got it. Cause you guys How many tranks did you use, Drew? One that I had already put one on her. I dropped two as soon as she fell in the trap, but wasn't sure how much time you had to use. I'd put one on her before the yeah, trap was dropped. Mm -hmm. Because I knew she was there. I, d I honestly I don't know why she didn't get trapped the first time because I'm pretty sure she was trappable. But I didn't get my I think my trank bomb missed, and I don't know if either of you had tranked her the first time. First time I was doing damage to hit the threshold. Okay. If we were then I think that close. probably she was already there, but I failed to actually uh, trank her. Well, she wasn't limping when she left the room. That's true. But she had to have been, like, right there. Because she was busted up, and good God, was it easy to knock her down and slap her around. And she kept getting really exhausted. Did they carry over... Wasn't it before... Uh, what is it? If we wanted, like, her... The plate? We wanted to kill her, right? Yeah, for some nuances. Did they bring that back again? There are cases like that where you want kill versus capture, although yes. I don't know if plate specifically is one of them. Okay. Yeah, I knew Looks that. Looks like plate. Plate is even uh, for capture versus car. And if you've got okay. my luck with capture of reward. You do not <laughs> yeah, I do wonder what the distribution on uh, number of rewards is like, though. I do too, yeah. Car, of course, is a consistent three, but capture seems to be in the two to four range. Fog of War. Man. I think I have to call it tonight. I got like an hour and a half to sleep left. Totally understandable. I know exactly Sounds how like you feel. a good idea. Get some rest, group. It has been a pleasure, aside from the... my shitty internet. Hey! Hasn't been that impactful, at least. Been yeah, I think it was like two hunts I had terrible lag, and then it's been pretty fine since. At least we I'm got glad. it done. Yeah. And we'll be doing plenty more. I think I might just reset my router when I get home every day now, just to see if just to make it I can't mitigate. It. I've never had... Oh, okay, I've had old routers that needed restarted sometimes. But I've had two new routers that I bought and didn't lease from, you know, ISP. Right. And they never restarted. They were fine. But this one had been on its side on the carpet, and I don't know if that disrupted its airflow. Right. And made it overheat. But now it's on a flat surface above the carpet. So. Gotcha. 
hopefully that helps. It looks like it's time for me to make another, okay, let's see, uh, melding. I finally made that chest piece, and as a result, I need to see if I can do a, uh, some melding here and not have to rely upon my charm for Maestro. I want to get something better on there. Oh, we unlocked Melding Haze. <gasps> oh, so many more abilities now. Oh my god, that's awesome. Slugger. Yes, please. have 16 of them yeah that works I'll take one of those for 500 Alex excellent that'll do so after <coughs> the next quest I guess I will have a slugger talisman and then I can swap into this new armor and get rid of my charm that's giving me the uh, maestro I'll have my throw my armor. Nice. I wonder, do we only get charms for melding in this iteration? I don't know. A lot of times it's a late game unlock to get whatever the RNG skill equipment is. For sure. It does seem a tiny bit later than usual though to get like a charm at all maybe I'm just misremembering but who drops toxin sacks is that Puke Puke I think Puke does. I think maybe also, is it Azuchi? What is the... She's not poisoned. Wh which one is the poison one? There's a poison Rogi? Rogi. Um, Rogi drops some, yeah. Sorry, I always, I always mix up which one is which. So is it... Cuckoo is, is soccer ball? Baggy is Scythe Tail. No, Baggy is Ice Raptor. Oh, Ice. And then Izuchi is Scythe Tail. And Rogi is, is Poison tail. Sack. Rogi is Poison Raptor, yeah. Okay. The, it's the three, Gen 3 Bird Wyverns are Jaggy, Baggy, and Rogi. Gotcha. I have a so Rogi's really actually better than Fouquet Fouquet for Poison Sacks. I figured, yeah. I, I just have a hard time keeping those those normal bird wyverns straight. Probably because birds aren't real. He says, having an extensive encyclopedia of Mario, Castlevania, and Mega Man enemy names in his head. <laughs> so, I guess I wouldn't mind hunting some Rogi. I would love Rogi. Where is Rogi? Is that HR4? HR for us. Happy, relaxing, killer. HR puffin' stuff, bringing it back, babe. Hmm? 
So yeah, I don't know how violently the the female hunters eat, but boy does the male one just like rip those dango off that stick. Yeah, she like picks up the stick of dango and just like slides it past her mouth and then yep. got a full cheek. Yep, same thing. And then and then does the like the taiji like woo whoosh under the green tea and then drinks it. Yeah. It sounds like the animation is the same. There you go. Equal opportunity dango eaten. Monster Hunter knows what's up. Gender has no impact on your ability to eat dango. As it should be. And drink green tea. Salute! Gombe! Get that tea. And on that note... Oh shit, I, I didn't do it, did I? Gosh darn it, I did screw it up. I did the thing. I forgot What'd you to... What'd do? I forgot to, um... I forgot to update my primary group hunting set after I got the uh, defense charm. <sighs> there it is. Okay. So again, bees, your defense and armor charm are your... Uh, attack and armor charms, they, they have to be in your inventory, or they don't work. So, I need to go back to item layouts, and I need to re-register and override this so it now includes the armor charm as well. There we go. Got it. Sorry about that. I, I always forget to fucking do that. I We, we did like two or three hunts before I was like, oh shit, I didn't even have my attack charm in my inventory. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was so proud of myself too, because you know how long it took me to actually start using item layouts. <laughs> and I was so happy with myself because I was like, I'm using item layouts immediately in this game. Yeah, good for me. Doesn't mean I was doing it well. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Sadie. Slap on the wrist. Flip of the hat. <laughs> I don't... I've never been here before. Yeah, it's an arena quest. I mean, oh. not actually an arena quest, but... The an arena game. locale. That's awesome. I haven't gotten to see one yet. The two monsters. Nice. See if I can... Switch them apart. Baggy and Rody, huh? How perfect. This yeah. Is. In an arena, no less. This is great. Oh, I love this game so much. You missed me having a, a, a really happy moment that got rained on. I was looking at the, the the new quests, and they have a whole bunch in Rank 5 that are, um, you know, like Oh boy, that does not last very long. What was that? The gate that was separating the monsters. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep, yeah, oh, it didn't last long at all, did it? Uh, yeah, so what Marble Dice is talking about is you probably noticed when I first jumped down, there's a wall right here that I'm walking on that was up, and uh, Rogi was on the other side of it. There's a switch that we can hit to pop that gate, and it's intentionally designed so that you can try to separate them, so you can get on one and I have to worry about your parents and the other. Yeah, it didn't last long, did it? <laughs> That's pretty fun. 
Um, by the way, too, Marvel Dice, uh, I mentioned this earlier, I think, right when you joined, but let me know when I'm interrupting you, because I need to get better about that. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what moves the horn I need to be focusing on, and what the values are, and what's disruptive and what is I'm trying to do a decent job of staying you know, on the monster's face, but of course, obviously, especially with like a small dungeon, the bird liver is kind of hard. But I didn't even realize I was being disruptive for a minute until Drew and I were chatting out of, out of game. And I was like, oh, uh, okay, I'm really glad you told me that. Uh, I was really happy to hear that was the case. Because honestly, I was a little bit concerned. Uh, I haven't noticed anything untoward yet, but if I see anything out of line, I'll let you know. Awesome, thank you. My concern was that I think one of the things that makes Monster Hunter what it is and why it's so great as an action team RPG is that you do have to worry about things like that. You have to worry about positioning and placement and range and, you know, making sure you're doing your role, right? And that's why you can't have, like, a full party of people with a hammer because they're all going to just be smacking each other all over the place. Um, and I was a little bit concerned, because I was like, man, Horn just seems broken as fuck. And it also seemed like, at least in our first run, that first night we were playing, that like, oh god, you just have to slip. slip. Oh, thank you for being so close I mean, I don't appreciate getting smacked. But, but I was worried because I was thinking like, oh man, not only is Horn like, really easy to use, far more effective, but also it doesn't even interrupt like it used to. But then Drew was like, yeah, you were, you were disrupting me. And I was like, oh, good. Thank you for telling me that. I didn't know. So that's something I need to work on and figure out like, how to reduce that and figure out like what combos are the best and what values are what and like what has the highest like knockout. Ooh! Oh, nice. oh Marble Dice is Mountain. Oh look at that! Look at that! Look at that, that underdog. We got some underdog action up in here. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to launch actually. Hey, you know what? Oh. You, you, uh, you launched enough apparently. <laughs> Rogi was definitely having a bad time. Also, it's a fairly decent thing. We have like a really tiny, um, little tiny blade tail and, and uh, big boy over here. But yeah, I was I was really happy to to hear that I was still being. Disrupted. Not because I want to disrupt, but because I feel like that is the thing that, that really makes Monster Hunter and the experience and being good at your roles. That needs to exist. Like, if they took away all of the ability to disrupt teammates and everything, I think it would really, really ruin a lot of the nuance and skill of the heroes. So I'm glad that that's not gone. Speaking of disruption, uh, I think Flinch Free was in one of the melding lists. Really? Which, if that is the case, then that would probably be the clutch super, Yeah, super clutch broken ability where you're just like, I don't have to worry anymore ever again. Um, but that's great because that, like, that requires you to use a slot. I'm fine with that. But that still needs to be a mechanic in the game, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's something that really makes Monster Hunter what it is. 
and it, it separates like bad, mediocre, and and good and really good players. It's like how good are you at positioning and awareness and not fucking your team up? <laughs> And that's why back in the day, uh, horn hunters were, were so rare. Because the horn was really difficult. Uh, you, you had to know how to position. You had to know how to. should probably heal. Oh, that's the kill. Do we just kill him? Yeah, now I need to heal and carve. All right. Well, how about this? I'll heal you, you carve. Um, but but they the, uh, there's they still have the old school kind of horn thing going on in this game. I'm not using it. It's like kind of a different. You can pick styles of play. I'm picking the new style, which is um, kind of more offensively oriented. The old method, though. What you had to do was very different. I guess, in just just for the sake of illustrating the difference, I'm gonna play it after this. I'll play it for at least one battle, just so all of my my beautiful bees up here in the beehive can can see how it works. But it's very different. Um, basically, every buff that you want to use has a note, and, or, or, I mean, rather, I should say, every buff that you want to get has a combination of notes. Every attack that you do causes one of those notes. The notes have to be done in the right order. And then, once you input all of those notes by attacking... Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, you do your recital and you cast all of them. And then if you do it again, you do an encore where you do an extra super powerful attack and it increases the the, uh, the effect and the duration of those things, right? Very different. It's a lot harder to use in a lot of ways. But it has like a higher cap on it in terms of the ceiling. But that, that made it so that, like, back in the day, Horn was very difficult to play because it was super disruptive. It had an incredibly long range, so it could disrupt your teammates at an incredibly large range. It only had a couple of moves that actually did the levels of knockout slash um, stamina damage that you would want. <clears throat> To, like knockout monsters a lot of its moves it's not that they were bad it's just that they were very situational and they didn't actually cause decent knockout and you also had to be thinking about like well I have to do different moves in the right order to line up notes to cast a song to get the buff right like if I were gonna if I was like I need to attack buff everybody that I have to do, like, L, X, A and X together, X, A, recital. And that was how I did, a, and, and that's very specific, because it's not just, well, I need to enter a, a Street Fighter combo set. It's also, well, but that's, the animations work like this. Like, when I do this move, it swings it this way, and this, so you're also factoring in, like, I have to do this note in the right order, but it works like this in terms of how I'm hitting the enemy. Can I actually hit them? And I think most people just never got good at horn because they were like, there, there's way too many things happening here. Like, how the fuck Am I supposed to juggle not being disruptive, proper positioning, knowing how each of these button combos actually swing my horn, what notes they cause, what notes those generate in order 
to perform a performance that actually creates the song that I want to give the proper buff. That's like two or three levels over the amount of things you have to think about for most other weapons. And as a result, you had almost nobody that played horn. Which was a real bummer because it's amazing. And every group wants to have a competent horn player. And every group almost never had one. I think the uh, UI usability that they introduced in the world and, and it looks like improved on in this game made yeah. a big difference to having yes. all of the notes legend on, on the screen, screen with the buff that yeah. it gives you including the button you need to press to get that note which is huge and marble dice is exactly right before world the way it worked was you had to memorize what horn you were using at any given time's notes and without showing it to you, it's really hard to illustrate what that looks like, but basically it means any time you use a different horn, you had to go into, and here, actually, I'll, I'll give you the best example of this I can. The game has streamlined this so much over the last couple generations, I can't show you directly, but I can give you an idea. So if I go into equipment info, and I click on my horn, right? I can go over here, Okay, actually, this doesn't even do a good example. But on my main screen, it shows you, like, XX, Sonic Barrier, AA, Attack and Defense Up, XA, XA, Health Regen, right? So back in the day, you'd click on your horn, and you'd have, like, seven pages of information. <laughs> I have two. One and two, right? One, two, right? Back in the day, it was seven. Six or seven. And... Somewhere in there was, here's your list of songs that you can play. And it would be like, red note, green note, blue note. Red note, red note, blue note. Red note, green note, green note. Green note, green note, blue note, etc. And every oh my single gosh. one. Yeah, I had forgotten that they had more than just three notes and just oh. recently assigned them to horns to oh, yes. screw up the songs instead of just giving you the consistency. No. Oh. No, every single one was different. All of them were different. I mean, it, and even uh, attack bonuses, defense bonuses, health bonuses, elemental bonuses, earplug bonuses, etc., etc. All of them didn't matter. It's like, they, they weren't I consistent. Understand. <laughs> what they were going for because they had a consistent recipe where okay this color plus this color plus this color will always make this song and then if you put in different colors then you get different songs and like it had this whole consistent musical color mixing <laughs> system and like that's kind of cool and all i guess but oh wow just please don't do any of that and then just give each yeah. each horn certain fixed box exactly well, and it wouldn't even have been so bad if it were just like, okay, red notes are always going to be attack. Green notes are always going to be like healing. Blue notes are always going to be something, right? Like, if they had even done that, it would be easier to memorize like, okay, well, this horn does this, this, and this. I need to combine these notes in this way but that's not how it was it was like every horn literally was different so every single time you got a different horn and sometimes even in the same fucking skill tree like like for example i've been using exclusively the uh kamuda and uh bone horn this game right both of them at this point are like level four Back in the day, even the same horn tree, like you go from bone one to bone two to bone three to bone four, sometimes the songs will change. And you have to actively memorize those, those songs every single time. And they didn't have an on-screen display of what those songs were. You had to go into your equipment and look at your item 
and look at the songs somewhere in there and memorize them. And so, you know, the, the horn and the, like, the, the, if there are three weapons that I have been playing since the very beginning, it's been, well, beginning for me, which is try you. It's been horn and sword and heavy bowgun. And the horn was always the most painful because every single iteration of the horn in every game, sometimes even in the same tree, I would have to re-memorize what the note orders were for every song. Because sometimes the horn would have up to five songs. And each of those songs were a different order of notes. And each of those notes were a different striking pattern and button input. And it's like, well, remembering the songs is one thing, but implementing the attack pattern that cast the song note is a totally different thing <laughs> that adds a whole other layer on top of it that is much more difficult because you have to be thinking like chess where you're thinking several moves ahead like okay not only do I have to know the vectors where I swing my weapon my horn to cast these notes but also I have to be thinking like well I want to cast attack up that means I need to do, like, you know, trigger X, A, to start. And it swings my weapon across my body and then vertically over my left shoulder, down to my right hip. But then, if I want to cast that song, there's two more notes I have to play. So, then I have to do another input. Maybe it's A. Th these are not, like straight up example this is like an example it's not like a parallel uh, blue drop posted if you want to yes i do hunt and chat i do thank you sorry I'm just trying to explain like how this works I, I i'm not trying to hold you up here um but but then you'd have to think like okay so then i've got to do this input but also you want to be hitting the monster with these inputs so you're like, okay, the monster has to be in the right position where I do this input to swing it across my body and over my shoulder, but then I have to swing it back across and the monster has to be in the right place. So I'm gonna hit him as I swing it back across horizontally from right to left. And the horn goes back up over my left shoulder. And then I need to hit like, you know, I don't know, for example, uh, X again, right? and drop it straight down. Then the monster has to be directly in front of me so that the horn goes directly down over them. Once I do that, I get all three notes for my song. Then I have to hit the trigger button in order to unleash my performance or recital where I perform the song and all three of those notes blow off and then it gives all of my party a buff. If I'm in a good position, then I can hit the trigger at the end of that, and then I do an encore where I play it again, and I do a further, more powerful attack that, and again, hard to explain without showing you, which I can't, makes your hunter move around all over the place and is break dancing with the horn and adds a whole other element to it and does multiple more hard hitting attacks that then increase the duration and the potency of those attacks. But every single one of those things is so much because you have to remember what all those buffs are. You have to remember what each of those inputs are. You have to remember what each of the orders of them are. You have to remember what the uh, actual move set is and the trajectory and the vectors of the strikes on those and their actual damage values and their status effect elements and their... Um, knockout elements and their you know like part breaking and 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 monster weaknesses for every single part of every single monster in the game and you also have to think about positioning for your teammates and what are the trip values how disruptive is this going to be am i at the range that i need to be 
like, am I at the out, the very out, like the longest range I can be when I'm hitting with this? So I'm not right up in a place that I'm going to get disrupted or I'm going to disrupt my teammates. And then you also have to factor in how long does it take to cast it? How long does it take for the notes to go off? How long does it take for the recital to go off? How long does it take for the buff to go off? It's ins insane. Like, horn is insane. Especially back in the day. And they've streamlined it so much because I think they realized that it's one of those weapons that like literally everyone in Monster Hunter is like, yeah, we want to have a horn player in our party that's good. But there are so many factors in being good at horn that there are like almost no horn players that were decent. <laughs> Not even good, just decent. Most horn players just wound up being the support where they were like, I'm not gonna even like focus on hitting the monster. I'm gonna like stay back and like swing my weapon around in the corner and cast songs because it was just so fucking hard to do everything at once. And uh, I think you know what I mean when I say that, Marvel Dice. Because I did that too initially. Like I would, I would be, I was a shitty horn player. I was, I was really intensive and focused on like what was happening with the party and trying to keep everyone buffed, but I couldn't, I couldn't juggle the, the spacing and the placement in combat. Uh, I was super disruptive when I was trying to do it up on the monster, like in, you know, the Wii U, Tri-U, and uh, early four. It took me a long time before I started to figure out how the horn was supposed to work. And I was one of those new horn players. And I feel like most people were. If that makes sense. They even, did they even put the notes that you had queued on screen in the old generation? Oh no. No, that's, that's what I was saying. They didn't at all. You had to go into your your equipment and look at your horn. No, time. I mean, not that your horn had on it, but, like, the sequence of moves you had just attacked with. Not on the screen, no. No, it, it, all of that stuff came, as far as I recall, like, in world. Like, now, it would show you what the buffs were, but it would show you what the buffs were because buffs always show up over your 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 little name icons in the corner. So you can buff your party accordingly. But aside from that, no, man. Like, all that information was... It was not on screen. Like, that's something they started doing in pretty recent generations. And it made it, it, it made, uh, for all of these reasons, it made Horn far and away, in my opinion, the hardest weapon in the game to play. And it was always that weapon that was like. Certainly the most esoteric. Like, I, I want it, I want to be good at it because who doesn't want to have just buffs out the ass all the time for the whole party, right? But when you're juggling remembering move orders remembering move orders combined with order of moves with the actual application of the moves in terms of like spacing, placement and um, vectors from where the move hits from and the ranges on it combined with disruption and range versus your party combined with all these other elements it just seemed like Horn had an impossibly high ceiling of skill. And I was just like, I want to be good at this weapon, but am I ever going to be? This is so much to do. <laughs> and it feels more reasonable. 
in the last couple generations. In this one, it seems very reasonable, um, but I, I almost feel as though they've they've overwrought it. And um, I want to hear more of your your input, Marble Dice, at this point because uh, Drew and I did talk about it more off stream the other night, and. Um, I was just like, yeah, I, I think that a lot of the things that they've done to the horn are a good idea. But I am a little bit scared that they really just wanted to have more horn players because people didn't get the horn because it was so intimidating and hard to play at, a, at a, even a decent level, not even a high level, that they just, they just buffed it too hard. And um, I feel as though my experience with the village quests thus far has been stupid. Oh, hey, I have Rem Reno or Remobros up here, and I need to um, fighting the loot drop. Go ahead and kill him if you want him. Okay. <clears throat> I can always come back and farm one later. I don't really care. I think it was Drew actually that was the most concerned about them. I don't want to make you wait, and I like boss fights. Um, I can always come back and harvest on my own. But, but yeah, I, I do feel as though, you know, I've been playing Monster Hunter since Tri-U, and though I am by no means a Master Hunter, I am a very experienced hunter. And I've never had an easier time ever. Like, I've been exclusively playing porn, and before any of you talk some shit, <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out there. Uh, horn was the very first weapon I played in Monster in Triton. And Marble Dice here can attest to that. I was very excited about that. I'd never played Monster Hunter before, neither had he. And there was like a giant bagpipe weapon, and I was and uh, my brother, who was very experienced in Monster Hunter, and got me, all of us, anyway, into it, it was like, yeah, Horn's fairly new, it's pretty awesome. And I was like, this is so awesome, I'm totally doing that, you know? And I was really hyped about it. But the fact of the matter is, um, I feel like it's a little bit broken in this game. And... My experience yeah, in the villager. I don't know. The quality of life stuff is uh, really good and makes a huge difference for the weapon. It um, does. It does feel like it might be a little overtuned in terms of motion value. I agree. Um, particularly with how kind of like, you know, plug and play, press button, get damage the weapon is. The combos are really simple. Don't really have uh, intense requirements as far as. Timing or things like that go? No, not at all. And I've been I've been getting in my village requests like five to seven minutes per time. With no Yeah. No I don't know exactly how fast village quests are taking me. Single player is always kinda like the monsters just fall apart. They do. Even before I upgraded my longsword and felt like the longsword coefficients were really low, I was still getting sub ten quests on village. Right. And that does make me feel better about it, um, for sure. But even still, like, I remember it. And, and it's like, it's one of those things where it's hard to judge. And I said this through, too. It's like, it's hard to judge. Because, again, even though I'm by no means a master hunter, I am a very experienced hunter. And I do have a lot of sense of things, even though things change. Like, I kind of have a really good instinctual idea of, like, what's going on. I have a, a, a fairly decent idea of, like, how monsters work, how the game in general works, how timing works, how spacing works. It's not a good example right now, because, uh, is just, like, pinning me against the pillar and stunning me and beating me up, and I'm probably gonna die in a second if I'm not careful. Or even if I am. <laughs> um... But, but, you know, though I'm not the best hunter in the world, I do have a lot of experience, and I have learned from it. So, 
every single monster in the game I play, I'm a better hunter. Regardless of how much they change the engine. That said, the amount of ease that I have encountered in the village quests is shocking. And the fact that anything shocks me, like stands out in that sense to me, with as much experience as I have as a hunter, that alone is helpful, right? Um, I've never had such an attack as I have in this game. I do feel as though they're compensated. And I do wonder, though, if that's like an intentional, we need to bring more people into the line. So we're going to do that, but we're going to make it pretty good at the level, and then it's going to kind of like plateau or balance out. Like, I don't know, right? It's not there will be much of a plateau effect at the end. Um, no, not at the end. That's not what I meant. I just meant that like, it's going to be really good initially. And then it's gonna like kind of go up and like meet that par where the other weapons all kind of converge before G rank that they're gonna introduce later. If that makes sense. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Um, I don't either. It's not like Horn exactly has a lot of skills it requires, so I mean it can pretty much just roll generic. Right. Blade master stuff. You can um, absolutely. Although. Certainly other weapons I think are going to catch up a bit Yes. as they get access to their key weapon skill. Yeah, that's what I think too. I agree with you. Because at the end of the day, outside of like what you would expect for generic hard-hitting uh, Blade Master abilities and Maestro, what does Horn have you need to do? Nothing, right? It's just Maestro and yeah. that's it. Yeah, Maestro and do lots of damage and knockout and stamina, basically. That's true, evade, you could take uh, knockout and stamina beat. That's, that's what I that focus on. Right? As far as I'm concerned, Horn is a hammer that's a bar. It's like focus on the head. Try to do lots of knockout damage, try to keep the monster exhausted and, and trip them a lot. But outside of Maestro, Horn doesn't have any unique abilities. It's just a horn that works differently. Kind of like how Longsword is a greatsword that works differently. And it's like, uh, that's, that's what I love about it, because Monster Hunter is really clever. It's like they have a bunch of like archetypal weapons, and then they have like subclasses or dual classes. I guess dual class is actually the term I'm looking for. Horn is a dual class. Horn is like a hammer plus something, right? Something that doesn't exist. It's a it's a hammer and a musical instrument. <laughs> Uh, whereas, like, Charge Blade is, like, what, like, uh, Sword and Shield and, like, an Axe or something? I don't know. Switch Blade is, like, Great Sword and something else. Uh, I guess even, um, even Dual Swords. Dual Swords originally was introduced to Monster Hunter as a Sword and Shield subset. Where instead of a shield, you just had a little sword. And that's kind of always been uh, there in Moe, and it makes sense. Like, it's a really it's a really good game design. I really like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I love that they have flushed this, all of these weapons out so much more over the, uh, the, the generations over time. I think it's really neat. Oh, I just rolled directly into that. That water ball in place. But yeah, it's it's neat. Like long sword is kind of a dual class. Horn is kind of a dual class. Charge blade is. It's, it's, they're clever. They're really clever about where they design their ship. And 
maybe they started that way, but at this point, like all these weapons that begin as dual classes are kind of just like full on classes now. And they've been fully flushed out. But you can still see that kind of like archetypal rudimentary design and like the subclass idea or the dual class idea of branching off. And I think that's really neat. I'm, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a heavy bard. <laughs> and there's something really cool about having like, you know, a warrior in like heavy plate running around that's a bard. Like, Almost kind of more like the D and D healer interpretation battle cleric. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it's a fucking tanky ass battle cleric. And going back to you and I talking about Angband, that's just like my favorite class in Angband is a half troll priest. Like by far, that is the fav my favorite thing to play because they are tanky as fuck. Uh, they have massive health pools, great defense, large strength, uh, but ultimately they still have access to like all the prayers and priests and god abilities and a pretty decent use of a lot of magical items and stuff. And it's like, yeah, man, they're hard to kill. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where you can make up for lack of lack of skill or tactics uh, with patience. And I think that's neat. I like, I like when games offer that type of variety of design and, and tactical approaches and situations. I think that's neat. And one thing Monster Hunter, of course, has always done well is that you don't pick a class in this game. Hunters can do whatever the fuck they want whenever they want. The whole point of Monster Hunter is having numerous sets and, and whatnot and builds. And so you're like, oh, what are we fighting? Okay, I'm going to use my gunning in this set. So glad they got rid of gunner-specific armor. Me too. That's always bothered me. Um, that was one of the best things they could have done. And uh, what we're talking about, for those of you that don't know the series, is that it used to be that, that Blade Masters and uh, Gunners were different, and they had two completely desperate armor sets, and Gunners' armor sets basically had like 50% of the armor. Now it's just different pieces of gear give different abilities. And maybe they're good for a gunner, maybe they're good for a blade master, it just depends on what it is that you're doing. So much better. <laughs> so much better. That was that was a huge I'm still trying to get used to that, honestly. I, I'm still not used to it. Uh, I keep thinking about it going into like, I'm like, oh, I need to build my, I'm gonna start building the ah. Oh, no! It was a slow, uh, recovery, um, underneath Monster Sailor. This is the only drawback. I've finally gotten used to making item sets. What I've not gotten used to is the fact that, well, you better make sure that you have all the materials you need for your item set to refresh when you go in there to just replace it. Because uh, apparently I did not, and I did not. 
replace my tracks, so I can't keep track of the And, you know, for where we are in the game, we're early and high rank. Uh, we spent a lot of our money on things like, you know, co basic supplies and like armor and power charms, which are extremely expensive. Those are like the early game kind of really huge money sinks. That happens usually right about this point. And so it's like, yeah, we're totally broke. We just busted the bank. And so, yeah, traps are actually kind of expensive. <laughs> it's gotta have tramps and train bombs. And it, it's, it's not exactly cheap. So, yeah, I guess I, uh, I, guess I, I, guess I burned all my traps. <laughs> totally my fault. I easily could have probably flash bombed that. Um, that's okay though. We'll get him. I am gonna go ahead and harvest this clear crystal because it's fast. And points. Also pretty. I like a roll that big is when it's sushi. I'm just gonna smack Plenty of monster hunters where I have died way more than that, way faster. <laughs> I think my my official total death count right now is six. I'm pretty proud of that. Tracking it anywhere? 
Uh, I'm tracking it in, in the string, yeah. We have, a, we have an official death counter rolling. I've not died yet in solo play. So, all of my deaths have been officially documented. <laughs> and everyone has seen them. And I believe it's a six right now. And I feel like that's pretty good for me. Where we are. Solo has been easy. Like, I've had no issues. Not only have I been in no danger whatsoever, but I've been killing monsters in like five to seven minutes. Which, again, kind of goes back to my point about the changes in hunting. Staying alive, staying alive. But I have never had such an easy time in, in uh, like solo village. It's never difficult by any means. But just like running in there and like completely bullying and brutalizing a monster and killing them in like five minutes at like low rank and being like, ha ha ha. I was never even in danger and didn't even have to use healing items. That's new for me. <laughs> you should uh, roll a different weapon. That's and what. I, see how you feel. Exactly. In comparison. That's exactly what I was talking to Drew, Drew about last night after the stream. I was like, I'm going to make another way what I told him actually was I was like here's what I'm gonna do I want to make a sword and shield right because that's my probably my uh, bow gun heavy bow gun and sword and shield are my two primary weapons like horn and those two are my three mains so I'm like all right I'm gonna do sword and shield and just go back to the beginning and uh, see how it feels because it might just be this iteration of Monster Hunter is easier in general. I, I don't think so, though. I think that they just overpowered Horn. But I'm going to I'm gonna go for it, and I'm going to do the, the scientific method and see if I can get even close to comparable clear times with the Sword and Shield. I fucking doubt it, though. Uh, in a world, at least, I always thought Sword and Shield was really hard to get competitive clear times with. Like, you could do it, but it required specific gearing and playstyle. Yeah, it does. And, I mean, I... You, you know, you know, I got really good at Sword and Shield. I became... I became Trip Master... Trap Master Flash over there. Um, but in terms of, like, just straight, like, kill time... I don't think I can fucking compete with what I'm doing with Horn at low level. So I'm excited to to try that out because I, I do want to compare the two. And then I'm going to do it again with Heavy Bowgun. I'm pretty then, tired here too, so I think I might take an early night along with Droob. I don't blame you. Um, normally, this is exactly about the time I'd be stopping. So, uh, thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. I hope that you guys... Yeah, it was. Good shit. Up into Hunter Rank 5 and got my ingot greed, so... Oh, you good. did? Nice. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Well, have a good night. Talk yeah, to you later. Too. Love you, bub. Take, talk to you soon. All right, well, it looks like it's just Zader bees. And, as a result, let's do two things. We're gonna check out what we can do here. So, we got lots of good stuff, right? We've been working hard with the money. First off, let's look at our weapons. Now, we have a couple of uh, horns that we're really focusing on, right? We got the Kamada tree. 
can't make this one yet. We still need more of those uh, Gajo Whiskers and some Carbolite ore. So, good to know. Uh, beyond that, as you can see, we have kind of like a fog of war. There's just that vertical bar with a question mark. Can't get up in there, right? So, can't see what's coming. Now, the other one that we built up a little bit is our, it's a blast, blast weapon. Where is that separate? Oh, actually, wait, duh. Up here we have, you can use the trigger and you can go through weapon list, upgrade list, right? Okay, so here's our, uh, Hunter's one. Oh. Right, because that's, there we go. Okay, so Monster Broth is all we need for that sucker. Well, that's kind of neat. Um, but this is the upgrade to the one I was talking about, right? This is the one that gives us in the, the upgrade to Blast. So all we need is the Commendation, actually, and money, which we're a little bit low on. Let's look at our armor. Looking pretty good. Where's all of our... Okay, so we still need this. We can't build it yet. Can't build that yet. See, you see these little... Like, there's a little orange pin. That means it's on the wish list, right? We've marked it. We can keep track of it. That's why the wish list is so awesome. Um, I could, I could sell items. Uh, Savvy, you're right. Uh, I choose not to though because it's so easy to just make money and we're early enough in the game that I don't want to do that because even high rank items a lot of the time are going to require you to utilize low rank parts, right? So I would much rather just have those low rank parts and then go out and target what I need. And in general, that's kind of what Monster Hunter is about. You really want to be careful about selling stuff. It's more about like, just go kill more shit, <laughs> basically. So, I don't, want to, I don't want to push progression too much without my buddies, right? Because I have my hunting group. I've got Wanyan and Marble Dice and Drew. So, since I don't want to push progression much, but I do want to play for a bit longer, we do have science that we want to do, right? Now it's time for science. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have fun. So, I hope all y'all are ready for this. This is exactly why me being the brilliant big brain gamer that I am, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm an idiot, have built a contingency. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch profiles to Lord Zader. Because of course, my actual gamer name is Zader, as most of you know. Now here you go for all you in chat. Yeah. Lord Alexander is something I had to do because I was very slow on the uptake on Twitch. Even though I've had the name Zader before Twitch existed. So we're going to go to my Lord Zader profile. We're going to switch. And the beautiful thing about the Switch is that, generally speaking, most games, different player profiles they get their own save files, right? So we're going to start a new character. Which is going to be great anyways for the sake of the stream. Because I didn't actually stream the very beginning of the game. I wanted to make sure that I had set everything up. And we were ready to jump in and start fighting monsters initially. Yes, Alexa, weird science. 
Plastic tubes and pots and pans, bits and pieces and bits and pieces and bits and pieces. My creation is it real? My creation, now do I know? No hesitation, no holy gold, flesh and blood. I do not know. I do not know. Anyways, um. So screw it. Let's go ahead and let everyone experience the beginning of the game. And I'm, of course, I'm going to keep it on the Monster Hunter language. It's a gentleman's way to play Monster Hunter. <laughs> We're restarting the game on a different profile simply to do science and look at the difference in the first few villager quests using, for example... Heavy Bowgun, or um, Sword and Shield. And it's going to give everyone in our stream that doesn't watch other streams a way to see the beginning of the game. Right? Because like I said, I didn't actually stream the very beginning of the story. I did the very beginning of the story and the first initial tutorial and setting things up and then I started streaming and playing after I'd already done all of that, right? So, screw it. Let's go ahead and just real quick play through and uh, see what the beginning looks like when I'm not using Hunting Horn because I want to get a little bit of perspective. Because from what I've seen thus far, Hunting Horn in the very beginning of the game is kind of broken. And is getting like super fast clear times that I have never seen since I've started playing this game. Which granted, I started kind of late. I mean, my first Monster Hunter was Try You on the Wii U, right? But that's still multi multiple generations back. I mean, it's been like 10 years or close to. So, let's see what happens, you know? Um, I, I guess it's been like 8 years. Whatever. 8 is close to 10 to me. I have very, very bad relationship with time. Um, I'm just going to pick a female hunter. I'm not going to customize her at all. I'm just going to say confirm. Don't care, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, all right, chat. Give me a name. What are we naming her? What was what was her? What was actually? You know what we should name her? Savvy. You already kind of gave us what we should name her. I can't remember. It's been too long. What is the 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 robot's name that they make in Weird Science? That's what we should name her. And that'll be her theme song. I haven't seen that movie in so long. Lisa. Her name's Lisa. All right. So here we go. Weird science, y'all. Here's our uh, here's our fabricated humanoid. <laughs> Super Hunter Lisa. Um, let's look at. Can we do some presets? Oh, there's only one. I was hoping they were gonna have a whole bunch so we could just do it real quick, but I guess not. Uh, can I make hot pink? <laughs> Wait, nah, it's not worth it. This again, this is for science. We're just gonna, we're gonna, I'm just gonna skip through all this. Um, we can always get more palamutes and um, more. Gosh darn it, one. 
<laughs> we can always get rid of them later. We can replace them with other Palamutes and Palicos, right? Real quickly, just because I can't stand it. Change all. There we go. Um, what's that? Change all. How dare you? Not dark enough. It's not dark enough. <laughs> eh, whatever. Again, we can change it all later. This is this is for science. Don't worry about it. We got one and two. Alright, there we go. We got Lisa up in here. Now, we have two different weapons to test. Uh, Sabby, I'm going to let you make this decision. Would you rather see sword and shield or heavy bow gun for this particular test? Oh, speaking of that, Sabby, here's every morning for you, except it's, you know, normally thunder and not a dog. And thunder banging on your door like, get the fuck up and feed me. <laughs> You're just laying there like, oh, God damn it. Five more minutes. <laughs> Thunder's like, bam, bam, bam. bam. The Savage Cat Thunder lives up to his name, y'all. <laughs> that cat makes such a racket. And literally beats on the damn door. He's a big boy, too. That, that cat is stout. And, and he's got some power. He can pound the shit out of a door. <laughs> I, I'm a little concerned sometimes that, that he's far denser and stronger than the integrity of Savvy's door and he's gonna go right through it. Well, I gotta say, I like the uh, the female initial hunter set a lot more than the male. I think that's a really nice design there for that initial armor set. How can you not absolutely adore it? I'm just going to throw out there the kind of things that you're missing in our Discord bees. Sabi and Nocturne have been sharing all kinds of wonderful things. We have a channel, or a part of our channel in our Discord, specifically for puns and memes. And there have been some delightful ones. 
The very latest is great because it doesn't require uh, any kind of a visual. Never leave alphabet soup on the stove and then go out. It could spell disaster. Hard to argue with that. That said, quite hard to argue with y'all not joining in on the fun. So, get in on that. Now, Lisa, rampaging all aside, I've got news for you. He's speaking Monster Hunter language, so I won't interrupt. Don't call me squirt. Should be a little slower, probably on the. I keep forgetting it's like, oh, I, I'm also trying to show off, like, well, this is what the beginning of the game looks like for those of you that haven't seen it. So, luckily, this is like the shortest tutorial Monster Hunter's ever had. It's never had extensive ones, um, but this is still the shortest. And they start you out. And basically the tutorial is just talk to these people, right? Um, for the sake of science, I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed through this. So bear with me. Trust me, the dialogue's not that great. So this is our, our primary merchant. He's also really important because he's the one that we need to talk to to unlock new camps because every map, every zone that you go to has actually numerous camps, but you have to kind of like, you have to discover them and then come back to him. And once you do that, he's your Huckleberry that unlocks them so uh -huh. that they can actually be like fast travel and starting points. Um, So yeah, he's he's a really important character, but as far as dialogue goes, I promise you at some point we'll intentionally do just like a story thing. For now, we're gonna get to the science. So this is all just telling us, you know, like how do you use your code? Who are the important people in town? Uh, this is Grumpy Blacksmith. Grumpy Blacksmith is great. He's not actually important because you have other blacksmiths like in the Gathering Hub and whatnot. But um, he's like your primary blacksmith character. And through this, you learn about well, here's uh, you got a buddy place over there, and you got. Uh, Dango chef over there. We already know these things. Also, I can ride my dog in town and I should be doing that. So. Oh, we can't even go over there yet. Wonderful. That makes it easy. They just want us to meet the, uh, the, the Dango chef. Which would be a lot easier if there weren't so many people to interact with up in here. <laughs> You're all getting in my way. I'm trying to talk to her. Oh, Lisa. Hey, I heard the good news. You're a certified hunter now. That's right. <laughs> and 
and again, going back to our initial stream of Monster Hunter Rise, uh, Yamogi here deserves accolades because she is the first non-felling chef. Uh, she is a quote, quote, I say heavy air quotes human because they're not quite humans, obviously. This is a very different universe than we live in. But the first human um, that is the head chef, right? In every other Monster Hunter, as far as I'm aware, and even my brother is aware, and he's been with it since the beginning, uh, there are always cats that are the head chef. But this is the apprentice of the head chef. So he's at like that grand master level, and he's kind of stepped down, and now you've got, you know, Yamogi here who has uh, really proven herself and has become worthy of that title of chef, right? I guess one would say that she's a prodigy. So cool! That gear really suits you. You must feel a ton braver now, right? I mean, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but I tell you what, I'm gonna go talk to Hojo because I want to hunt something. So here's your initial introduction to the Gathering Hub. I actually, it's so funny because like I said, this is like the shortest tutorial ever. Um, but I, I forgot that it's still like decently involved. I wonder, oh, I can just skip it. I forgot, I can just skip it, okay. So yeah, we would just... There. So Hojo's like, talk to her, talk to him. Ignore me! So here's our uh, ninja boy, is master of the arena, right? Um, in the Monster Hunter universe, you have an arena that we talked about kind of before, but I didn't really go into detail on it. Um, oh shit, he wants me to, I forgot about this. I have to summon my Kohoot and take a picture. Some devil Joe. Yep. All right. Talk to. Okay, talk to her. So, Minoto, other. Other twin. Oh wait, no, I'm talking to the wrong twin. I gotta go back up here. I think. Yeah. There we go. So in the normal villager quest, the other twin, like you got, you got one twin is your quest maiden in uh, the village, and one is your quest maiden in the hub, right? Okay, so she's telling me about my kohoot. It's my owl. Now they want me to name my owl. So again, science, number three. <laughs> no, not 33. One, two, three. Birds aren't real anyways, so. Now they're telling you about spear birds and all that. Stuff. We'll go into that in more detail later. Science, science, science. This is about how to play online. 
uh, Sonri, we love you, but we don't have time right now. We're not going to be going online again. Thank you, Mr. Kitty. And maybe, perhaps, oh, we also have quest to talk to her sister again. Yes, let's dive into quest. Thank you. Oh, I forgot that there is an urgent quest, it looks like. Back to basics. So this is your um, learn how to play the game quest, right? These are great. I'm going to just let this play. People who've seen the earlier stream, you've already seen it. But it's not long. Alright. So, this is how they want to teach you to play the game, right? They're going to make you follow dude here. Got you, and he's just like, I know you want a refresher. Here's our camp. Here's a tent. You can go in there. You can change your items. Here's a supply box. It has shit for you. Isn't that great? Now, I'll meet you down by the river. And I'm like, okay. And this is like, here's everything the dude just said. And I'm like, great. I listened to dude. And it's like, here's everything about map and stuff. And I'm like, great. I know. Thanks. <laughs> so in early levels, um, the guild box actually has stuff for you. I don't know if it's the case in this game. In prior Monster Hunters, um, at low ranks, you just get a bunch of stuff in there at the beginning of a request. This is telling you you can harvest. Like basically this tutorial is like they're gonna show you all the important things about the game in just one quest real fast. So if you know what you're doing, right, now he's gonna tell me about wire bugs. This is my grapple hook little thingy. So he wants me to jump up there. So I guess this has suddenly become a tutorial by accident on how to like skip through this tutorial <laughs> if you don't want to do this and you don't care. Um, this is telling me about how to ride on my Palamute, my doggo, so it wants me to get on my dog and ride. Hop, get on your dogs and ride! Also, where is Guy? I think we're good. Yeah, he just wants us to get under a dog and dash, and then we're gonna meet him up here. Uh, again, something that they introduced in the world that's really nice is that you can just gather from nodes immediately. Uh, you just need to tap the button as you ride over him. Now he's telling us that we have all these um, little little buggos uh, that you can gather as you go through areas and uh, they give you uh, temporary bonuses that persist throughout the quest that you're on. After that quest they vanish. But trying to max out your abilities in the quest is a really good idea and they don't make it really hard. Like, there's a lot of these little things, creatures around, that are going to buff you. Talking about your health gauge, your stamina gauge, all that. We've already talked about this a lot, and we know how that works. So. 
head to destination. Gnarly, a pack of Azuchi. All right, there's three of them. Go take them out for me. All right, so here we go. Finally time to actually kill some stuff. Now, interestingly enough, I don't even know what weapon I'm using. I think this is, is this a long sword? Yes, I guess so. Um, I have not used long sword in a very long time, and I have no idea how this weapon works, so. <laughs> All right, I guess I killed them all, so good. I think really my dog and cat killed most of them. Now they're teaching you that you need to, you know, carve what you kill. So we'll carve some azuchi real quick. You get a little bit of tasty monster parts because, of course, that's what we're all here for. Kill those monsters. Chop them up. Take those pieces. Make new stuff. Beautiful. Also, you can actually carve on, on dog back. We've talked about that before, but I'm just going to make a point of it right now so y'all know. Right. Now, uh, dude is waiting for us. So what you got for us? Sushi. Ah, oh, just as I expected from my star, people. That was an incredible hunt. I mean, he's not wrong. Don't even know how to use the weapon, and we killed those things in like five seconds. Again, mostly our dog and cat, but we'll take the credit. Now he's uh, talking about fast travel. So what he wants you to know is that you can go to your map, and you can do a fast travel. Right? That did not used to be a thing. Um, that's something that added in the world, I believe, before that. No. Fast travel, no way in hell. That's not a thing. Alright, well, uh, uh, he's proud of us. And uh, we did a good job. And, we completed the quest. and now we're going to return to base. So from here we're going to go, and we're going to select either um, Heavy Bow Gun or Sword and Shield. Now, I am personally leaning towards Sword and Shield because it's a melee weapon. So we're still going to be quote quote a Blade Master. Um, I want to use Sword and Shield and get just a little bit of a scientific comparison. I want to I lay out like, okay, this is how this weapon feels that I have a lot of experience with in this iteration. How does that compare to my experience in this iteration with the hunting horn? Because so far in this game, the hunting horn in Solo has been ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Like, I'm killing monsters in like five minutes, right? At the very beginning of the game. That is not normal. And it's like, yeah. I'm an experienced hunter, but like I've said, I'm by no means a master hunter. I'm probably the least skilled of all the hunters in my little hunter group. And I'm getting these these uh, clear times, right? Like, that's nuts. That, that shouldn't happen. So this is just uh, her telling us about the way quests work and um, like, you know, different types of quests. So, first things first, obviously, if we're going to be here, we need to go ahead and just pick up a whole bunch of, um, we don't want that, optional quests, just because those are bonuses that you get done as you go through. Uh, let's see. Well, we do have to do key quests in order to progress. However, Expedition Tour might have an actual monster. Okay, so question mark. Question mark means a monster can appear, but you don't know what it's going to be. Right? Um, most likely, if we do one of these other quests, we're still going to go ahead and get a more powerful monster. 
So let's go for this one, and we're gonna kill eight chocolates. Now we're gonna go in here to our item box. This is basically telling us how our item box works, and it's like, yeah, we know. Thank you. Um, change your equipment. Obviously, they're gonna give you. You have the starting uh, camera equipment of every type. So sword and shield it is. There you go. So you'll see here, we started with longsword, right? And it's got these stats over here. You can see it's got attack raw 50. You can see its sharpness values there. No other attributes, right? No elements, no, no affinity, which is critical. No defense boost, no slots. Um, we're going to go ahead and swap with the sword and shield. As you can see, sword and shield has the exact same stats. Now, just to give perspective, I started initially with hunting horn, and I'm playing exclusively that. You can see right here, exactly the same stats, right? So yeah, we're doing sword and shield. Uh, let's see how that pans out. Run over real quick to eat. Always eat. This is a tutorial on how Dango works, but we already know how Dango works. Alright, let's see. We're gonna go with um, Polisher. And Those are all combat related skills. We're not here to gather. We're not here to build up a character. We're only here to test early weapon stuff. Alright, here we go. Wish us luck for science. Alright, so we're killing Jaggers. here and there's a shortcut there's also a greater wire bug over here that'll launch you up over that cliff and you can take a shortcut I think for what the, what we're doing though we want to go like kind of the normal path which again first quest makes sense take the obvious route right so we're we're jumping down here to kill these little guys and I haven't actually I've not I've not played any weapon really Aside from horn yet in this iteration, so I have to remember how to play a sword and shield again. But that's what we're here for. So sword and shield, much 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 faster than hunting horn, right? It does multi attacks. It does them very fast. Sword and shield, of course, you also have a shield, so you can block. Uh, sword and shields notable primary ability that makes it unique in addition to all those things is that you don't have to put your weapons away in order to use items, right? And normally you do, uh, with a few exceptions. Uh, not so with Sword and Shield. Like, I can have Sword and Shield out and I can use potions and eat and cast things on people and all that beautiful wonderful stuff and that's why one of the many reasons that sword and shield is very strong and certainly as you go further into the game you're gonna find that um, oh there's still another one of these assholes over here is he next somewhere where is he i think we got a jaggers over here hiding oh wait no maybe not okay i spoke too soon there was a little, like a little quest dot there on the map that you can see in the corner. 
but I think it just took a second to register, and it looks like it vanished, so. I think that was just the game taking a second to register that I'd killed all of them. Still gathering a few things, as you can see. Um, for one, it doesn't take long. But also, you know, you wanna, you, I'm, I'm trying to test like a little bit of progression. I'm not going to go very far with this. Obviously, we're not going to be here long. Um, we're focusing on our actual character. But again, I'm, I'm, I want to test this stuff, right? So I'm gonna. We're gonna do a, a proper hunt. After this quest, we might need to do one more, and then we should have access to uh, a proper hunt. You know, real monster. Not just these little weaklings that just like, eh, and run around and murder some little guys. It's like, yeah, we can do that, but, you know, it's not really what we're here for. I th think maybe it wants me to actually go up this way. So yeah, you should already be able to tell um, uh, Sword and Shield is fast. It does lots of little attacks quickly. Right? Of course it does. It's a small, uh, you know, deft, one-handed weapon. Two more jaggers. So the one. We have all these places on the map that are not open. It's also showing up the initial jaggers spawns. Well, not the initial, the secondary after the first. I think if we keep riding around up here, we're gonna unlock more of the map. More of them will appear. But if need be, we can also just go right back to the beginning and uh, re-kill those early spawns that we've already fought. Got a bunch of gaju, these fish swimming around in here. We're going to ignore them for now. Again, not here to build up Lisa, only Lisa exists for science. Oh, that's a. Uh, foggy, foggy blade tags. One of those. One of those. Guys. I get them confused. But these are the little ones. The little size tails, right? Izuchi. There we go. That was the other one I can remember. So many little raptor wyverns. Hard to keep them straight sometimes. Alright, what do we got? Okay, so it looks as though perhaps the, uh, the guys that we're here for have respawned. Oh yeah, this is kind of neat too. I actually haven't talked about this in the stream, I don't think. Um, you got these bushes, and if you cut these bushes down, you can find these little, uh, little buggos that give you these temporary buffs for the quest. And also, look at this, see the sword stuck on the ground? That's a relic record. And uh, these are something that, not only do they give you story information, like they, they have kind of some history of the world. Of Monster Hunter, but also they give you a ridiculous amount of, I think that's like a thousand points, <clears throat> and that's a lot, especially like right out of the gate as we are, just starting, 
you know, if you're getting those those relic records, um, those are really going to give you a lot of points early on, and that's great because you can use those points for all kinds of stuff. Uh, for example, I use points instead of money to buy food before quest, right? So you think about the fact that that one little thing gave me a thousand points. Like, that's significant at the very beginning, especially. That's, that's a big deal. Could have used y'all buggos earlier. Let me ride the dog in style. Now the three of us can pose here majestically as we wait. So again, science has not kicked in very much yet. Too early to tell. We need to fight a real monster. Now we have two options. We can... Oh wait, actually, you know what? We have three options. My bad. Yeah, so this is the guy that wants those, uh, we found that relic, so we gave him that relic, and uh, he's he's the guy that wants those, right? So now the blacksmith here is going to tell us about upgrading armor and all that good stuff. Fugen, the elder. <clears throat> Telling us about how requests work, uh, and these are typically like, well, they want you to give them something, and it's a delivery quest. When I got the thing he wants, I'll give it to him, right? And the quest is done. That's how those work. Now, real quickly, if we run into the hunter's hub, because unlike some games in Monster Hunter early on. The Hunter's Hub is just another way of doing quests. And these quests also will scale to how many people you have in your party. In some games that was not the case early on when they introduced this. No matter how many of you there were, they scaled to four people. Right? Now that's not true. Now they scaled to one. Which means, my beautiful bees, that this is actually what we should have done probably initially to test our science. And we probably could have gone right here after we finished that initial stuff and actually gotten uh, a true hunting quest to test our metal, quite literally. And yeah, I'm skipping all the stuff where she's telling us how the hunting hub works. We know. Alright, so... There you go. Yes, she does. She does have actual monster quests. So, we got Echnosum, who's the new monster. Here we go. Let's do this one. Um, hunt a Kuliaku, tried and true, bird wyvern. We all know how he works. He's a soccer bird. Look at him trying to sneak off there with his little egg. It's looking like the cat that ate the canary. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go for him and just try to get a, an idea of how that feels. We'll get some jang, uh, some bunny dango. <sighs> well, it doesn't matter because we're not, um, again, we're only using this character for science. We don't really care. So let's go with 
these. We're just going to make our life a little easier in terms of sharpness because our sharpness is very low starting out. at it after just to, again, for science. All right, so we're here to kill soccer bird or foot bird, depending on where you are in the world. Oh uh, yeah, I guess all these blocks are good. All the are base. Base, his, uh, the base, I belong to me. So, judging by the fact that there were four potions and four rations, I'm not entirely convinced that this is appropriately balanced for single player. But we'll find out. We'll find out something, at least. And that's what we're here for. So I'm actually going to ignore all nodes and monsters that I can't just like directly ride over, you know, like that. Just grab them on the route. We're only here to see how effective we feel versus uh, Kulu. over here on the side. Almost there. There's our... Nope, no, nope, that's Acnosum. We're going to ignore you and keep riding. Suck it, big bird. You can stay on Sesame Street. We'll be back for you. There's our Huckleberry. Got it, this book. Now we got party. So yeah, again, uh, sword and shield, very, very, very different. Uh, much faster attacks. I can block. I can't block with one. Um, I also have a lot of I have a lot of combinations. Like for example, I can uh, hit the shield repeatedly. My shield does bash and knockout damage. Uh, my sword does slashing and chopping damage. And it's nice because that means that sword can both cut off tails. Now, granted, you can't get the tails off of bird wings, but my monster can. My sword attacks here do cutting damage, so that's nice. Um, then, if you want to knock your monster out. Right, you have a shield defense. You're like you know, an old Captain America, you know, shield stand, right? And those are going to be not coming. So, you do have options in this house. So, the shield is just a little bit of guard. Make it so, number one. Oh, he went into the damn... <sighs> Ran up into the damn impassable wall. Alright, so... He, he went into a place that we cannot follow, so now we have to figure out... Where is he going? I'm going to say already, I'm feeling the gap. Uh, my initial hunt on this guy with Hunting Horn, I already had done way more damage to him. And uh, 
I knocked him down, even. Because of the massive knockout stagger effects of that weapon. And is there, okay, so there should be like a greater wire bug somewhere around here that I can jump up the waterfall. There, there it is. Oh, but I don't have any yet, do I? Gosh darn it. That's annoying. Alright. I just want to experiment on monster damage, but I gotta do all this stuff to set it up. I should have probably just played on my main character. Um, and, you know, reset all of my gear and start with basic level weapons I've never used before. But, for some reason I was like, well, it's probably going to be easier if I just start a new character, but I don't have to worry about, like, all that. It'll already be set up. But, yeah, no. A lot of tutorial stuff going on. Even though it's a short tutorial comparatively... Obviously, I'm still having to go through a lot of stuff to do what I'm trying to do, which is just, I just, I just want to fight the monster for the sake of comparison. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm already pretty much feeling like, in our initial encounter, that Hunting Horn is staggeringly out of the uh, sort of shit in terms of both controlling and trivializing and in the fight over there. Also, I should be able to Now, here's the thing about my uh, shield right. So I blocked that. Now, look at this. I don't have to follow it anyway. I can just sit here and block and pop a potion, right? And I still was able to recover in time and block his attack. So, there you're seeing one of the great strengths of Sword and Shield, and what makes it so good, is that I can use like that. I can, like, legit just sit there and block and pop a potion and go back to blocking and basically take all but no damage. That's super strong. Um, that's definitely something that you know, not do. And when you start getting into the game and combining that with for example, abilities that are healing your party, like for example, uh, what's it called? Life Dust, right? Life Dust is basically a potion that you just cast on everybody. Well, for anyone that's not a Sword and Shield user, you have to take the time to shoot your weapon and use that item. But for Sword and Shield, that's not the case. Uh, Sword and Shield can just have the weapon out, realize that it party members are close to the day, they themselves up, right? and then immediately just pop that item without ever being the weapon. And that is very strong, and it's one of the reasons the Sword and Shield is so good. It's also why Sword and Shield has potentially some of the absolute best uh, support item sets. Uh, he tried to jump at me, there was a flash bug there, so right as he jumped off the ground, I just smacked that flash bug, and it created a flash bomb effect that blinded him, which knocked him down, and canceled his uh, That's That's basically, it's exactly the same as a flash bomb. The flash bomb is an item to carry on you, and can utilize to that effect. Um, there are now also bugs, as I think the world was the first that did that. I'm trying to remember if it existed before then. So. And they're basically just a living flash bomb that's just chilling on the map and is uh, awaiting your leisure, so to speak. But yeah, at, at this point, I feel as though um, if if I were using Hunting Horn, this monster would already be dead. That might be because uh, the Gathering Hub quests are not as single player balanced as I thought maybe they were, as the rest of my group thought they were. So maybe this is bad science. Maybe I should have probably just continued on the villager quest to see. I was just hoping to fight a monster. 
I'm trying to sharpen my damn weapon. Again, look at me uh, popping potions that put my weapon away. Oh, I thought he was gonna miss me by a little bit, but nope. Nope, sure did he. Oh, he stunned me too. Yeah, I might actually die. <clears throat> I also didn't actually do any research at all on uh, how to change things, so I don't know how much Sword and Shield has changed yet. I don't know how much Heavy Bow has I don't know how much anything has changed. Aside from Horn, because that's all I've played. Like, I've, I've not played any other weapon except for Hunting Horn, and now Sword and Shield, not counting Long Swords that they made me start with on that first quest. Uh, they did give me the option to change it, but I just accidentally skipped through it, so I kind of missed it. Otherwise, I just would have started with Sword and Shield, because that's what we were trying to test. But I wasn't paying attention. This is taking a really long time. Um, and again, I'm not sure if that's because... It's things aren't balanced uh, one to one for single player uh, or if it's because I'm just really doing that bad of a job and just um, I got I got paralyzed by that that insect. Uh, that's really unfortunate. It really hurts. That's why Manabra uh, dicks, because it'll float in there and sting you and paralyze you. And that's a perfect way to get set up for a nasty, nasty follow up from the actual big monster. Well, and that's, yeah, exactly, Zambi, and that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to illustrate here. It's like I'm trying to like, walk through and talk about that process. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot. I mean, Monster Hunter has a ridiculously high ceiling. Uh, and again, even with tutorials and telling you a little bit about stuff, it does not hold your hand in a really good So, doing this comparison here and I'm stunned again because I got hit. If you get hit enough, hard enough, um, I think it's based on how much damage you take based on your life total, if I recall, uh, you'll get stunned. Right? That's another way for you to get paralyzed. It's not, it's not prowl. Paralysis and stun are different. It's not prowl. Um, they're two different mechanics. The difference in them being, for example, uh, shock traps, right? Shock traps electrocute and paralyze monsters. Hitting monsters repeatedly in the head and doing lots of uh, KO damage. Oh, is the game volume? Oh, oh, weird. It's at the same level it was before. Interesting. It's higher now. I will uh, lower it in a second. I apologize. I wish I would have known earlier it was so high. I'm not surprised because I'm further away from the mic now. So that makes sense. Uh, luckily, I am in single player, so I can actually pause it. Sorry about that. Someone probably should have told me that like several hours ago. Alright. Yeah, I don't know what's up either because nothing has changed. A 
far as I'm concerned, though, uh, this science experiment is over. Um, because if I had been doing this quest with Horn, which I have done this quest with Horn, we would have been done a minute ago. I am already like, wow. Does it sound better now? Or is the game volume still too loud? Signs point to Horn being just like really, really overpowered at that early levels. This monster should be really hurting um, already if I were using Horn. I feel as though what's happening right now with it is much more, you know, on point with like what you'd expect with normal weapon layout. Right? Like, like, she's probably pretty beat up and weak. Um, but she's not quite there yet. And certainly I'm not, like, bullying her in the way that I was with Horn. Like, with Horn, at this point, I already had her, like, on the ground, knocking her around repeatedly. Like, I finally, that's my first knockout right there. It took me a really long time to get that knockout. Right? Um... I feel as though with Hunting Horn, like, it just, it would probably just be over already. Like, that'd probably be my second knockout, if not third. And she'd probably just be dead, honestly. Um, yeah, so you can tell she's get, starting to get weak. Uh, you're gonna see now, like, it's like I knocked her out. We're starting to stagger her around a whole lot. Um, and she is enraged right now. You can see the like the steam coming out of her, her nose and everything. That means that's, that's a, usually a good indicator of being enraged. Monsters have different tells based on what they are. If they're mad or not. This is a pretty basic monster, so her tell at the moment is just like she's, she's breathing heavy. Um, but, but overall... It, it just it just feels as though if I were using the horn right now, like it, what I'm gonna do after this. Yeah, no, the, yeah, hunting horn is the weapon I've been using the whole game. Um, the the giant club that plays music and buffs the party. It's basically it's the bard weapon, right? But in this game, the bard weapon is a gigantic combat maul. <laughs> so. Uh, we're comparing we're comparing the the potency of the the hunting horn to like sword and shield which in, in a lot of ways is, is like a real standard weapon the whole point of this is science I guess you missed the whole first part of that which explains why you didn't answer if you wanted sword and shield or, or bow gun because I was giving you that choice to pick So yeah, trying to trying to do some science. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this quest because this, this Birdo is probably getting pretty close at this point. I would hope she better be. Um, if she's not, then Sword and Shield is really way weaker than Horn, right? And I know I'm not playing Sword and Shield very well because I haven't played it yet in this iteration, and it's been a hot second. Um, even though it's one of my best weapons, 
I don't know the differences. <clears throat> I don't know what they've changed yet. Um, and I'm out of practice. That said, I was also out of practice and didn't know what they changed with Hunting Horn. And this monster was dead several minutes ago. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that was like 15 minutes ago, Savvy. So maybe you were AFK or something. But it's not a big deal. Alright, so right now I'm repeatedly doing my shield slams on her face because I have a second. I'm hoping to, I'm stacking some KO damage, trying to knock her out again. Um, you'll see when that triggers, there's like kind of a weird like lightning flash effect that happens on her face. That means that the that I'm doing KO damage. It also makes like a bunch of like bright orange sparks. It's always been pretty clear, but it's definitely much more clear in this one than it's ever been. Um, they made it much more clear. Like you can really tell when you're doing uh, knockout damage, which is nice. Like that's a good thing. Um, it's also, you know, it's, it's satisfying. There's, there's some catharsis there. Smack a monster in the face with the shield, and, and like a bunch of big bright orange sparks fly out, and, the, and you get like a bunch of vibration in your controller, and the monster's like, and kind of like reels back. You know, it feels good. It makes you feel like a badass. All right, I don't. That does not look like a limp. Um, if if she's not limping, then I'm really disappointed. Because that means that we are really underperforming, and she's not even capturable yet. That's uh, definitely disappointing. But see, this is what I would expect. That's that's kind of my point. Um, in most monster hunters, you know, this is the very beginning. Like, I don't have any abilities, right? I have the, the most basic level starting weapon. I have the most basic level starting equipment. I have no special abilities. That's what that's what you expect. Like, this is not what it, what is happening. Ow, oh, shit! What is happening with me right now and the amount of damage I'm doing? is exactly what I would expect. The problem is that the horn has vastly exceeded what I would expect. You're not supposed to fall over here, soccer bird. How dare you? Gosh darn it. I was trying to be slick and go over here in the corner and sharpen for a second. And uh, she is not about that life, apparently. Then I'm going to demonstrate. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish this quest. Hopefully it's not going to take too much longer. It shouldn't. Uh, and then we're going to do the exact same quest again without changing any of our gear, without upgrading anything at all. Uh, we're going to do it with Hunting Horn. Just to clearly demonstrate the difference, right? Because Lisa is our scientist. doing some great science right now, but I'm, well, let's just say I am surprised by the results. Yeah, I don't, what the hell is she doing over there? Oh, she found a pot. Of course she did. Bullshit. Damn you, soccer bird. 
archaeology, archaeology, something, something. So here's our big, big boom attack. Ah, oh, I missed with that. But yeah, you can see, like, I get this, like, I can jump back and I can charge it and do a follow-up jump in the slice. Um, if I succeed in landing it, it also gives me a launch attack where I do kind of like a, a shariuken and fly up into the air with my sword and then come, or with my shield, and then come slashing down with my sword, right? And uh, back in the day, and I say that, though, that's actually a pretty recent thing. In, like, the last couple iterations, those would cause, quote, quote, mounting damage, <clears throat> which help you mount, mount monsters and ride them around. Now, granted, in this one, mounting works differently. Uh, so those are still great attacks. They just open up new ways of hitting monsters, new vectors, new uh, angles, and also give you more ways of, like, for example, say, oh, I don't know, I want to damage a large monster's back, right? So if it's a tall monster, I can do something like this, and then jump up and jump down, and that's going to uh, give me another way of hitting them, like, up at a, at a higher point, or if I want to chop off a tail, um, sword and shield is obviously a, a small sword, right? It doesn't have a large range on it. So, if I want to chop a tail that's kind of tall, like some of these monsters have pretty damn tall tails, that I can't, like, I literally cannot reach them by doing this, but I can reach them by jumping, right? So, uh, Sword and Shield has some attacks that are designed kind of for those purposes, and that's what you're seeing. Right there too, you saw I intentionally um, used that attack in order to actually evade. Like I knew, I knew uh, that Bird was going to be jumping out. Was going to be jumping in directly at me. So I uh, did that attack in order to leap backwards out of the way. Uh, for those of you that follow my stream and love the games that I love, and like something of the night, like Alley Card's backdash, right? like a little backdash into my hop. Uh, and that helped me evade that initial Birdo leap in right there. So it, it has other elements to it as well, right? It's because it's all about placement. Oh my god, it's taking me forever to kill this stupid thing. I don't, I wonder, maybe they're not. I, I'm, I'm just thinking that Hunter's Hub is still not scaled to one person. I, this is not a one if this were, even with as poorly as I'm playing Sword and Shield, um, I should have killed this monster already. Like, I, I really think that, uh, they still have, like, a, a multiplayer scaling going on in their sub. Uh, I was, I was told that was not the case, but... Even though I haven't been playing Monster Hunter since the beginning, I'm a very experienced hunter. I've been playing it for, like, a decade. And I gotta tell you, my hunter sense is telling me this monster is taking way too long. This is not a scale to one hunter monster right now. So, regardless, she must be close to death. Like, that's not a limp. Again, she's still not limping. Um, that said, she has to be close. Second start of the right, straight on Tomori. What's that, Savvy? Bear Boy. 
definitely no time for them. We're, f we're singularly focused here. Oh, yeah. Well, um, that's not that's not surprising. Um, it's surprising if you think that uh, these monsters in the, the this hub are scaled to one player, but like I don't think that they are. Um, I think my uh, people in my my group thought that they were. I don't know where they got that information. Um, but, but based on what I'm experiencing right now fighting this sucker, it seems that is not the case, right? Um, this, there's no way in hell this is scaled to one person. This is like old school Monster Hunter. This monster is very clearly scaled to at least two players, if not more. It must be. It's taken way too much damage, um, to not even be limited. But that's how it used to be. Uh, Monster Hunter did not use to scale the Gatherers Hub multiplayer monsters to a single player. Like, that was not a thing. Like, you could not do one player solo scaling uh, with them. They always were scaled to at least two people, if not four. So, that's another thing I wanted to test. And yeah, the science here is telling me very clearly, like, yeah, this is not a solo monster that we're fighting right now. Um, obviously, or she would have been dead a while ago. But that's okay, because we wanted to really test the very beginning of the game, <clears throat> Horn versus like, you know, quote, quote, more standard weapons. Sword and Shield being, like, probably the basic, oh shit, I got knocked out, I might die right now. If she attacks me again, I'm gonna die. Alright, luckily, she did not. I was knocked out for a second. So yeah, if we can compare, you know, kind of a, a multi, like a, a two-player fight, sword versus a uh, horn that's going to be pretty effective okay, let's see. Where, where, where to go? I guess I need to bring up my detail map. okay so she is just south of us we're going the right way oh I didn't even see her because she was just sleeping right here on the ground. Heh. Well, unfortunately, Sword and Shield doesn't really have a good knock up, or knock out, or not knock out, uh, wake up ability. Um, whenever a monster's asleep, they, they're gonna, the first hit is gonna be a critical. It's gonna be like double damage, or 50%, I think 50% more. Something like that. Um, so you wanna hit him with the hardest attack you got. Sword and Shield uh, being a quick weapon, a uh, high DPS small hit weapon, is a really bad wake up weapon. Uh, normally, if you're going to be doing wake up with sword and shield, you're going to be doing it with like a speed setup bomb build, and you're going to be using bombs to wake them up. And bombs do a ridiculous amount of damage. But yeah, she was, she was uh, just passively sleeping here on her own. Uh, that probably means that she is almost dead. Uh, normally monsters run off and go to sleep when they are capturable. That means that they are, I think, within 20, 25%? I think it's 20. I think, I think it might depend on the monster to a degree, but I think generally speaking, if they're capturable, it means they're about 80% dead. <clears throat> Somewhere in that, in that range. So... Unfortunately, we do not have capture means, but that also does mean that um, she is very, very close to, to being out of the fight. So we're 
almost through here. And you know, kind of fun. It's I, I really enjoy doing things like uh, having, you know, absolutely no gear and being really weak and uh, uh, fighting stuff that's a little bit over my level, you know, like it's exactly what I live for and it's exactly what I want my whole stream and channel to be about. It's, it's the hard fights and uh, learning. I would, I would much rather do badly at games and show off a thousand different ways to fuck up and to improve than to have a stream where I was just awesome at games and just did everything really well. There are tons of people out there that you can go watch that are amazing and are just awesome and don't really fuck up and do everything at a very high level. That's not what I'm about. I'm about the process of learning and getting better and I want people to see me do badly and then I want people to see me do better and do better and do better. And hopefully, we'll, we'll get enough people up in the chat. That's a big limp, and she is very close to dead now. That was That's not even a limp. That's like a, oh no, I am very close to dead, and I need to go right now. <laughs> so finally, we're almost done with this fight. Um, but yeah, the really ultimately at the end of the day, the theme of this stream is about growth. And I want people to see me do poorly, and I want people to see the process of me do better. Because that's how it works when you play a game, right? That's, that's real, and that's honest. And maybe it'll encourage more people to play some games that maybe they wouldn't before. When they see me do it, and fail at it, and they get better, and they're like, oh, well I can do that too. You know, it, maybe it doesn't matter if I suck initially because I'll get better. And it's like, yeah, obviously. That's the whole point. <laughs> you learn a lot more from failing than you do it su from succeeding, you know. And that's the fun. Where's the, where's the fun in a game if you can just jump into it, you know, and be amazing at it right off the bat and then it's just over? There's nothing to learn. There's, no, there's, there's nowhere to go. You're already there. It's boring. Much more fun to uh, to fail repeatedly and then suddenly succeed because you've grown and learned something. That's what it's all about. She, she she digs up these like rocks and pots and stuff and hold, just kind of holds them there in front of her face and uh, they are like way harder than she is so they'll bounce you if you're not if your weapons aren't sharp enough right and of course we're at the very beginning of the game which means that of course our weapons aren't sharp enough we have like yellow sharpness terrible nowhere near hard enough to uh, you know impact a rock. <laughs> All right, so Birdo has to be um, in like the last less than ten percent of her life. She's probably about five percent right now. You can see, even though she's enraged, uh, you can tell she's enraged because she's screaming and she's got like s mist coming out of her mouth. She's like. <laughs> Right? And she is just spazzing out, doing all kinds of stuff, screaming a lot. Um, that's how you can tell she's enraged. But you can also tell that she's like really close to dead and really exhausted. Not just because she staggered away, but because um, even while enraged, she was having to like take breaths, like pauses and breathe deeply. And she was kind of like drooling and stuff, which usually means that she's hungry and like low on stamina, so she needs food, right? To get her stamina back, just like hunters do. Because monsters also have stamina, just like we do. And uh, they also need to recoup their stamina. Oh shit, act 
and I saw them just showed up. <sighs> well, that's kind of annoying. However, looks like it's time to ride some wyverns, peeps. <laughs> Yes, yes, we know. We, we we ride monsters and we smack them into each other. Thank you, tutorial. Appreciate you. So yeah, it's kaiju fight time. <laughs> so now we're gonna fight uh, Aknosum here with our little Birdo we wanna kill. But really, we just wanna kill Birdo. So I got a few smacks in, right? There. Enough to drop a bunch of shinies so that I can take Aknosum and make Aknosum beat up our bird wyvern that we're trying to kill. So now it's time for Big Bird to take down uh, Foot Bird. And there we go. Uh, mission accomplished. As you can see, ramming Big Bird into soccer slash Foot Bird there really sped things up at the end. <laughs> Go figure! Gigantic monster smashing into other gigantic monster does way more damage than my tiny level 1 unmodified sword. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> it's like, when in doubt, smash monsters into each other like they're action figures and you're 5 years old. Or 3 years old more accurately. <clears throat> I had much more complicated storylines going on by the time I was five with my action figures. <laughs> Alright, so last thing that we're going to do is we're going to complete this little experiment. We'll build on this later. Oof. But for now, this is a direct comparison. We're going to do the exact same quest again. We're not going to change any of our items. We're not going to change anything at all. No upgrades. We're going to use the exact same food layout if we can. And we're going to use the hunting horn. And see how that goes. I should have looked at what the actual time on that quest was. And I didn't. Um, but it took a long time. That was easily over 20 minutes. Which should not be the case. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure, what did I eat? I ate like, what was it? Deflector, Defender, Polisher, I think. Regardless, none of these actually add to my damage, which is, is what really matters. Basically, I'm eating for quality of life right now. What were you going to say, Savvy? Can we try using what? Yeah, okay, so there we go. Female animation is exactly the same as the male animation for eating. So that question's been answered. More science in the bank. Now, Oh, well, the other weapon option to compare to Horn was Heavy Bowgun. I thought it would be good to have a direct comparison between Sword and Shield and Horn because they're both melee weapons. They're both Blade Master weapons, right? Whereas Heavy Bowgun is a gunner weapon. Has different rules, has different play style. Um... Okay, so here's our, as you've all seen from watching the stream prior, if you have, 
this is the weapon we actually started with and focused on, right? Here's our Camera Curus level one. It's just a giant signpost from a shrine that we tore off of something and started swinging around. This is your level one beginning hunting horn, right? Um, in terms of items, I should have had an item set that I just set up there at the beginning, but I did not. So now I gotta do it the hard way. Meh. At least they made it much easier in this one. This is, I don't know if there's a quick way to do this or not, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of all of them. And then you can just transfer all the items back like this. Sort, boink. I sure burned them. Man, I didn't even use any mega potions. No, you're great, Savvy. That's exactly the point. Like, that's why I'm doing this. I'm hoping that I'm actually, you know, giving people a little bit of, um, cause you know, a lot of people, there are tons of people out there that know more about Monster Hunter and better at it than I am. But I'm by no means a new, new, new player. And I'm just trying to share a little bit of wisdom and also do a little bit of experimentation. It's like, for you new hunters, anyone that's starting this game, well, let's, let's do a little bit of science and just look at, at how different weapons work out in the very beginning. Like, what do you want to start with? Um, and so, yeah, we're just kind of right now comparing, okay, well, like, for example, sword and shield, how does it stack up at the very beginning versus horn? About to find out. So again, we're gonna do the exact same quest, right? Tired and feathered. We have uh, basically the same layout. We haven't changed any of our gear. We're just doing it now with the hunting horn instead of the sword and shield. Let's see how much faster we can get this done. Exactly. Science! Enter Bill Nye Lightning, me, or uh, GIF, GIF, GIF Peanut Butter, GIF Animations. Enter the whole stream that's hilarious about the, the naming of the word GIF and how stupid it is that the guy that made it says it should be GIF. All right, so you'll see, there's our Birdo. We're gunning for him. Coming for you, Birdo. Making a beeline. Yeah, peanut butter is awesome, but Jif peanut butter is not. <laughs> that stuff is garbage. Get real peanut butter. Oh, what's that? I'm not gonna get a a, a Jif peanut butter sponsorship. Oh no. I'm so sad. Boo hoo. Yeah, I don't like Skippy either. There you go. Yeah, a lot of the times, uh, those generic peanut butters are going to be a lot better. Just read the labels, pay attention, do a little research. Oops. All right, so now we're here. Here's our huckleberry. We have hunting horn. Now, one of the most important things to note is that your first level hunting horn does massive amounts of knockout damage with large range, and it's also going to give you an attack bonus, right? So already we're doing more we're going to do a lot more damage than the straight sword for this level overall um, because every little bit adds up and we have a passive attack bonus that we're creating 
just by swinging our horn around. So that already is going to make a huge difference. Now, in addition to that, um, you'll notice that I can also heal myself because the particular horn that I'm using and the songs on it is health recovery, which is amazing. And he just knocked me out. Yes, he did. Now, again, doesn't help that I'm playing like an idiot. I'm glad I have a dog there to wake me up. So I got stunned, but my dog ran over and smacked me out of it <laughs> so that I didn't get, you know, walloped. Um, your, your cats and dogs are pretty smart about that, and they, if they are able, will tend to run over and, like, knock you out of sleep and paralysis and things of that nature. Uh, you can also do this for your friends. So, when Wanyan, Droob, and Marble Dice and I are on the party together, if one of us were to get slept, paralyzed, you know, paralyzed, whatever, um, any of the other ones can run over and just kind of, like, kick or whack us and knock us out of it, right? Which is really great. It's always been a part of Monster Hunter. Um, it used to actually be that you had a kick command. I always heard horn, but it wasn't until this last leg that it's that huge ass weapon and not some kind of literal saxophone. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, Savvy. Um, Ever since the Hunting Horn's induction in Monster Hunter, most iterations of it have been gigantic, huge-ass weapons that look more like great mauls than an instrument. And where the fuck am I going? What is the quick way to get up to this asshole? Still not entirely... Uh, understanding where the maps are, or like how to get where. Working on it. One, it's it's kind of it's kind of just a monster hunter trope um, that the weapons in this game are completely ridiculous and absurdly oversized. It's always been that way. Uh, it's like Cloud Strife eat your heart out levels of absurdity. You know, this is this is the very fucking fr this is the horn that they give you standard issue. They get so much more ridiculous. <laughs> and you want to talk about big swords? Cloud ain't got shit on Monster Hunter. Some of the great swords and long swords in this game are completely absurd in terms of size. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> and you've got, like, hammers that are, like, they took a revolver for a giant that's, like, you know... 20 times the size of a human and cut off the handle and cut off the barrel and put the uh, bullet like revolver chamber, which I don't know what the term for that is, the appropriate chamber, but the barrel, like the barrel chamber where the bullets go uh, on a stick and you slam it on the ground and it explodes. Like, there's all kinds of crazy crap like that. Um, it, the weapons in this game get giant. Like, the one I'm using right now is moderate. <laughs> just, just to give you some perspective. Uh, this is a moderately sized horn. I am not exaggerating. I'm not even being slightly hyperbolic. And it's actually really interesting because that's actually part of the lore. Because um, again, this is a different universe and these are not humans. Hunters are not humans. Um, they are a different race. There's a bunch of different races in the world of Monster Hunter. Uh, hunters are a race that is very powerful. They are basically superheroes in this world. Um, 
back in the day, long ago, hunters apparently were like 30 feet tall or something. Like long, long ago, thousands of years ago or something. Uh, it's hard to explain without context, but you did see like some of the rampages, right? Where we had like kind of a tower defense mode and we all had installations where we were defending like cannons and uh, ballistas while there were waves of monsters. Well, apparently back in the day, hunters were so incredibly large and strong and powerful that those ballistas and those cannons and the dragonators, which are like the huge lances that pop out of the wall and do ridiculous amounts of damage, those literally were the one-handed, two-handed uh, weapons that hunters wielded. They weren't installations they mounted. They were holding them in their hands because hunters were giants. Um, and that's why we can take hits from these massive monsters like we can and get like knocked into mountains and dropped off cliffs and not take any falling damage. And we can swing around things that are larger than we are. Um, quickly and efficiently, it's because we are superhumans. Like, we are from a warrior race that is ancient and extremely powerful. And even though we are lesser than our ancestors, we are still basically gods, right? Ouch. Demigods, I guess. Soccer ball. Soccer bird just fucked me up. Yeah, so I got knocked out. Like, I was stunned. Um, and then Birdo there just swung around and just threw a rock right into my groin. <laughs> it took me out. But yeah, the lore, the lore of this world is very bizarre. And I don't fully understand all of it. But one thing I do know is that hunters are effectively like metahumans. Like we are, we are, we're the superheroes of this world. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we are the X-Men. Um, the hunters are the, the X-Men or the Avengers or, yes. Oh, no, no, don't, don't count that. This is, yeah, yeah. This is a side thing. This isn't connected to the main we're we're just messing around with stuff right now. This is this is more about like experimentation and stuff. This is not like a a challenge or anything like that. The results of the quest outside of comparisons between weapons have absolutely no bearing on anything that we're doing and going for, and I don't give a crap. So this is not gonna contribute to any counters. Aside from uh, good pun counters. If anyone has good puns, of course we'll count those, but... Outside of that, no. And that's just the t and I appreciate you asking, thank you. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of lore. There's still a lot of it I don't understand. Um... And again, they introduced an entirely new race in this. Like now we have Palamutes. They're new. There never used to be dogs before, you know? So I don't know what those are gonna bring to the table um, in terms of lore. I have no idea uh, what they add in that way. I don't really understand or know very much about Wolverians, except that I think they're a much more ancient race then it basically it seems like in a lot of ways there's a lot of parallels between um, uh, Tolkien's fantasy and Monster Hunter like it seems as though hunters are basically um, what do they call them uh, shoot Numenor god my I'm so out of I'm so out of the loop it's been a long time I used to know a lot of this stuff but I, I really forget a lot of my Tolkien lore. But the old race of men, um, Aragorn was like the last, right? Numenorians, I think, is what they're called. They're like the original race of men. 
uh, and they're they're like they're way above normal humans. Like they're far more intelligent. They're far longer lived. Um, they just they're just they're superhumans basically. It's like the whole race was like Captain America in the MCU, not in the comics. Uh, I think they're called Numenorians. I'm trying to remember. Then you've got like just just normal men, right? Like Aragorn looks like he's in his late twenties when you first meet him, but he's actually like what, like eighty or something? Because again, he's of like the original race of men. And they are much longer lived. But elves are immortal, right? Like, elves just straight live forever unless they're killed. Uh, so, like, I think that, like, Wivarians... I, I think Wivarians actually might be more like dwarves. Dwarves live, like, hundreds and hundreds of years, but they do eventually age and die. Uh, whereas elves will not age. Elves will live indefinitely and either they're killed or they they go back across the the, the ocean uh, back to the original island where the uh, the tree of life was where the Silmarillions or the summer the Silmaril that's that's what the whole initial part of the, the Silmarillion is about it's about the creation you know the tree of life and the land of the elves, and I forget what the Silver City is called. I'm just, I'm so bad with names, I just can't remember any of that stuff. And it's been a long time since I've read the Silver Elite. Even though it's far and away his, his best work and my favorite, it is in a lot of ways like reading the baguettes <laughs> in the Bible. It's just like lots and lots and lots of lists of names. And it can be really hard to remember, uh, you know, chapters and chapters and chapters of made-up names that are not what you're used to. No, no, I was sorry. I was making a parallel to, to Tolkien. Um, the Silmarillion is, like, the basically the genesis and the, uh, you know, the the beginning of it's like it's like the whole early what do you, fuck what do you call it the Old Testament of the Bible the Silmarillion is the Old Testament whereas Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit are the new the, the New Testament right um, in terms of Monster Hunter lore there is I think a book that Capcom put out I believe at some point there's like a, some kind of like a hunter's compendium that explains like all of the lore and the history. I don't own it and I've never read it and I don't really know or understand much of the lore. Um, I was just trying to make like parallels and comparisons to explain kind of how the, the world works in Monster Hunter. And most people at least have some kind of an idea of Lord of the Rings so it's like yeah well that's that's an easy comparison to make. There's all these different races. It's like the, I guess the, the Palicos are like uh, hobbits. <laughs> you have these cat people, you know, and they're, they're all about food and they're, they're real sturdy and they're real hardy and they're real reliable. And uh, they're, they're also kind of adorable, but it turns out they're actually really good in a fight too. You know, and, um, much like the quote quote humans in this world have their hunters, which are like their superhumans, the the fellings in this world have their hunters as well that are like super cats, and those are the palicos. The palicos are the badass meta cats that are super powered. And they are the hunters among their people, and they work in, in tandem and in league with hunters. And it's like the, the honor and the pride of their people to be a palico, right? Um, I assume 
it's similar for Palamutes, but Palamutes are a brand new thing, and I have absolutely no idea where they fit in the lore, because they have never existed until Rise. They're, they're brand new. Never, never were there dogs before. We just had lots of cats all over the place. So now, all those dog lovers out there that were like, man, I love Monster Hunter, but where's my dog? He's like, well, now you can have both. And I love all animals. So I'm happy because I get both a dog and a cat. Or several dogs and several cats. And it's wonderful. And I can ride on my dog, and that's even better. Though obviously if I have to pick, I'm always going to be a cat person. But yeah, happy to have a dog too. Alright, so I'm curious how close this asshole is to get me. Because I've actually done a much worse job of fighting this monster and staying on it than I did the last time. And yet, I still feel like I've done a lot more damage uh, a lot more quickly than I did last time. So, yeah. Definitely interesting. So we just broke his head. There. So that part broken. That was his little his little pompadour crest just snapped off the top there. I'm gonna pay for that one. Yeah. Luckily I did not get stunned. See how they're just chilling there for a second and they're like breathing heavy and they're drooling and panting? That means that they are out of stamina. Um, that's the equivalent of like if in a lot of games, you know, you have stamina meter and you run too long and do too many actions and then you have to go <laughs> and keel over. Yeah, again, monsters also have stamina. And um, weapons that do knockout damage, like the horn, uh, cause exhaustion, right? If you hit monsters anywhere in the body, aside from the head, it does exhaust damage. If you hit them in the head, it does KO damage. Like, they're, they're connected. Um, so, when I'm hitting it in the face, I'm concussing it, and ultimately knocking it out, right? But if I hit it in the body with a weapon, like that, uh, then that is weakening the monster's stamina pool and, and draining its reserves and wearing it down. So, uh, when you're using a, a blunt bludgeoning weapon like a horn or, you know, a hammer are the two best examples, you need to be focusing on trying to weaken the monster, but also primarily your goal is to stay kind of out of space and try to knock it out. Like, that's, that's your position and that's your purpose in the party. Then you'll have, you know, some good cutters, um, maybe long swords, great swords, uh, bug lance, switch axe. They're going to be focusing on cutting the monster's tail. If it has a cuttable tail, uh, these these bird wyverns, their tails are not cuttable. But most monsters, you can cut their tail off. Um, then different different zones on the monster have different weaknesses, and it depends on the monster. Like some monsters, uh, their arms or legs are going to be susceptible to cutting. Some monsters, their arms and legs are going to be susceptible to bashing. Some monsters, their arms are going to be susceptible to bashing, but their legs are going to be susceptible to cutting. Vice versa, right? Um, some monsters' head is so damn hard that you need to do some stuff. Uh, in order to make it possible to deal knockout. Oh shit, Azeroth chased me. Gosh darn it. <sighs> this is the one. I'm trying to do science over here, Bear. I guess he just left immediately. Okay, so he just chased me up here in order to smack me in the ass and be inconvenient, and then he immediately just turned around and ran away. He only came over here to make my life difficult for a second and to harass me. This troll bear. 
What an asshole. Um, but yeah, it just depends on the monster. And monsters have numerous parts to their body, right? They've got like uh, legs, like front, like uh, quote, quote, front legs, four legs, back legs, um, tail, back, head, chest, sometimes horns, or other attachments on the head, right? So, it just, like, the monsters, like, there, there's, there's so many things going on, and uh, all the monsters are different, and you just, that's part of the joy of Monster Hunter, is you have to learn every monster, and you have to learn everything about them. You have to learn all their tells, you have to understand, like, what attacks they do, uh, what they're weak to, where they're weak to it, um, what elemental weaknesses and strengths they have. Are they susceptible to sleep, paralysis, poison? Are they susceptible to, um, you know, like, do they, are they hungry? Uh, do they get hungry often? Can you use bait on them? Where do they go to sleep? Where are their nests? Where do they eat? Like, there's so many factors, and every single monster in the game is different. So, you're not just learning your like distance and range and how to use your weapon and all your different weapon types and all of your different abilities on your sets and your skills. Uh, you're also learning all of your, you know, Palamute, Palico skills. You're also learning all of your teammates' skills. You're also learning the range on all of your teammates. You're learning all of the ranges on the monster and all of its different body parts and where your positioning is for every single thing every single monster does. You're also learning that and comparing that relative to every single person in your party and where they need to be and where you need to be relative to them so that you're not disrupting each other and all of you are doing your jobs. You need to learn um, so many things for every single different monster in the game. And it's amazing. And it's why Monster Hunter is so good. And again, it's so good because it doesn't hold your hand through that process. It doesn't really even give you hints that there is a process or those are things that you need to think about. It's something that you have to learn through experience by playing the game and playing with other people uh, and just kind of witnessing it and, and screwing up, <laughs> you know, and being like, oh, wow, okay, well, that was bad. I shouldn't do that again. Um, maybe that attack is not the best attack to do right now, right? Or when this monster uh, rears up, that means I need to go to its left. Uh, but when this monster rears up, I need to go to its right. Or when this monster is enraged, I need to go to the other direction that I normally would, right? Or I need to get prepared to uh, roll under its tail after it does this move. But if I go to the other direction, I can avoid that but then, oh, maybe after that, it's going to do a backdash and, like, a roar. And then after the roar, you need to be prepared because it can follow that up in several different ways. And you have to worry about, like, oh, shoot, is it going to do, like, this big nasty blast attack or something? You know? Um, and so it's just really cool because it has that, that kind of learning thing where it's like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. You just have to figure it out. And, like, monsters don't have health bars, you know? Like, it's, it's so brilliant. It's such good design. Um, and it's so rewarding. Like, when you get to that point where you start to, like, really understand how certain monsters work, and it really becomes instinctual, where you can't even quite put your finger on it, but you just know when they're going to do certain things, and you just know when they're almost dead. Um, and you get to the point where a monster that is really giving you a hard time is like very easy all of a sudden because you just always seem to be a step ahead of them. It's the most rewarding feeling in the world. It really is. Um, and I think that there are very, very, very few franchises that have so eloquently pulled that off in design so consistently and so thoroughly as Monster Hunter. I, I really, I can't even think of another game that, that I can compare it to, if I'm being honest. Um, it's 
It's like, I think I think probably the, the, the Souls games is the closest. But those are much more about, you know, like an immersive solo play experience of a whole world and everything. Um, and, you know, though there are big nasty bosses and everything, it's a lot of, like, well, the normal enemies kill you too. Monster Hunter is much more focused on every fight is a boss fight, and ideally you're in a group, and you all have different roles. So there's a lot of overlaps there, and it's the same kind of, like, really hardcore uh, punishing gameplay where it rewards experience and skill, and it doesn't hold your hand. But whereas, uh, like, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, etc., Souls franchise is more like solo play, Monster Hunter is more team play. And, and you know, the Souls games are a little bit more lots of lots of enemies um, everywhere, whereas Monster Hunter is more, you're fighting bosses all the time. So, there's a lot of parallels there. I would say that's probably the closest parallel is, is Monster Hunter and Soul genre are very similar Though, um, Monster Hunter came substantially earlier. They even have similar layouts, actually. They've, they've kind of changed it over the last couple iterations. Um, but the... Not counting, like, Monster Hunter 1, right? That was weird as fuck and apparently had, like, tank... Dual stick tank controls. Um, aside from that, they have very similar control schemes. And, you know, you have to use, like, items in combat. You have to, like, manually... The bars are the same. Even a lot of the buttons are the same. Um, and so, I don't know if it's it's actually what happened, but when you compare like the initial, the original Demon Souls to like the early Monster Hunter games, it feels like Demon Souls was heavily inspired by Monster Hunter. They just went a different direction with it, and that's why I love both franchises. You know, they're both awesome. And they both give me a uh, very, very satisfying and rewarding gameplay. Where it's like, yeah man, this shit's hard. <laughs> you know? But once you start getting it down, it's like, oh, I get it. And it's really rewarding, you know? And it feels great. Yes, uh, I am, though only sort of, Nocturne. Welcome back. Um, you've missed a lot of the explanation as to what we're doing here. <laughs> You're, you've come into um, end of stream science mode, basically, is, is what's happening. And me talking about mechanics and history of the game and game lore and comparisons and Oh, bummer. Well, if you're lurking, then you're probably going to miss a lot of uh, a lot of the end of it then. But enjoy those burgers, man. I wish I had some, that's for sure. Yeah, we're comparing, um, well, for I thought I was doing a different thing than I was, um, but I think I've accidentally scienced out that we were wrong about uh, the hunting hub, the gathering hub. Uh, I, we were all under the impression, at least I thought we were, oh shit, that actually really hurt, and that also, did that knock me out? No, it didn't. Okay, good. Thank God. Um... We also thought that they had rebalanced it, so it scaled to number of hunters um, down to one. That is very clearly not the case. Uh, this this is definitely not scaled for one person. 100% no, obviously. So we accidentally science that out, <laughs> uh, and then because of me 
talking about all kinds of other stuff and getting distracted and having some RNG chaos and a bunch of other nonsense. Uh, the, this experiment is basically turned into a completely different experiment that was intended, and I approved absolutely nothing in regards to uh, Hunting Horn versus Sword and Shield. Uh, but we did prove that, um, yeah, gathering hub quests are like they used to be, much higher level than solo play. So, progress. <sighs> Limp. You were already limping. I would like you to just die, honestly. Darn it. Am I gonna have to stay up all damn night just to defrost this stupid turkey so I can make a damn burger now? I think I am. Because now I really, really want burgers. How the hell did that soccer bird get that shit off? This, this asshole is so close to dead, and I just want them to die at this point. No, you're good. I'm glad you got him. I just wish I was with you. It's my own damn fault for not, you know, making the good, the good ones. I coulda. I coulda. Coulda done it. I could make a mean burger. Black ass. Not at this time you can't, Savvy. Not allowed. Also, I'm extremely picky about um, meat. My burgers need to be exactly the right rareness, and they need to be bloody. Most places and people overcook them quite a bit. Okay. Well, again, we 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 did a science. Uh, but we proved the wrong points, so. <laughs> Fun. There's that. But I think we've still learned a lot here today, people. <laughs> About something. Ooh. Oh. Oh, you had me until the Thousand Island. And thank you, Savvy. I appreciate it, but it's way past your bedtime. And you're cut off. But yeah, Nocturne, that sounded really great until the Thousand Island. That shit is way too sweet for me, though. Can't do it. Not a fan. Not a fan. Now replace that with a thousand other condiments I can think of and you got a deal. I'm also assuming that's not your traditional pickle relish since typically Thousand Island has pickle relish in it. God, I love caramelized onions. Caramelized red onions are one of the best things on the planet, on like everything. And just plain also. <laughs> also pickled red onions. Pickled, like if you want a really awesome relish people, just fucking pickle some red onion. And that shit is amazing and can go on everything. 
It's also really good for you. Okay. Well, in any event, we were only here for science. We do not care about Lisa's progression. Um, so we're we're leaving we're leaving her behind now. Um, but yeah, fun, interesting. Just to have a nice clean cap on it, let's jump back for a second and do, oh wait, I can't do it from here, can I? I have to change my, I'm on the wrong profile. I forgot, I, I made a new profile. This, that's the science profile. So let's go ahead and drop that. We're gonna really quickly just jump back into our actual real profile. just so we can look at a couple of things real fast. And then my bees, unfortunately, we're gonna sign off. Because it is late and Seder is very tired. And we're also two hours beyond our normal cutoff. Of course, our normal cutoff doesn't apply anymore. It's Monster Hunter time, so. We, we hunt till we drop and that's just how it goes. If all these people hadn't got me talking all this stuff about lore and testing things, I would have been out a long time ago. I have. And I stream I streamed for even longer yesterday. Monster Hunter has that effect. I just want to check something real quick. Also, I want to do something before I forget. Okay, so where's my, there we go. They gave us a lovely little fast travel on the map so we can just hop around, which is nice. Uh, and it, I don't know if I showed this off or not, but uh, there's a cozy nest. And you can just kind of hop up here. You want to do this, you don't want to really, I think five quests is the limit and then um, you start getting items knocked off the bottom of the list. But after every quest, you get some items up here in this little Kohoot nest. <clears throat> you can come up here and grab them between quests and get some free stuff. And sometimes they're pretty darn good. Not to mention, I think it's also a five quest thing for the Argosi, which is basically like your, your farm where you can have uh, your Palamutes and Palicos kind of passively farming items. Oh, I was, I'm talking to a palico by accident. Well, we appreciate it, buddy, but as you told us, we need to talk to your boss. So, yeah. So, I, I do have a palico here named Phoenix that right now, their job is just to do the trading for us. So, as you can see, quite a few items have been acquired by Phoenix. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and take those. So those are the kind of things, those are things you need to remember um, to do occasionally between your quests. It can be hard to remember sometimes. Luckily they made it much better in this one because you can just, you know, you can be online with friends and still go and do these things in your village. Whereas in a lot of the prior Monster Hunters you would have to like leave multiplayer and go do stuff and come back. and It was kind of clunky and it wasted a lot of time. In this one, it's a lot faster and a lot more convenient. It's like, oh, thank God. Apparently, there's all kinds of questing um, stuff I need to do here because we've made some progression. But I am tired, so I'm going to take a nap. And then next time, we will fire Z missiles On the upside, we have a clear path moving forward, and uh, we did a lot tonight. We got a lot done. It didn't maybe seem like it because I didn't actually make any upgrades, really, for the most part, but I got a ridiculous amount of high-rank materials. 
and um, moving forward next time we play, uh, yeah, gonna be jumping our gear up quite a bit because even though we're still performing at a decent level for where we are, most of our gear right now is still in the low level tier and we have an entire new tier of high level gear that we are available or have open to us. Uh, we just have to start making it, right? So yeah, uh, pink skull and excitement. Next time, next time, things will get even more. Re oh wait, what? Follow that sailor. Where are you taking that, Ikari? Follow that cat. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. Hey, bud. I am. Yeah, I will. <laughs> exactly. To each their own according to their own abilities. I train to kill giant monsters. Ikadi trains to carry gigantic stacks of hay. <laughs> and bamboo and whatnot. Alright. That's probably a good time to call it. Alright. Love you all. It's been a pleasure. We'll be back soon enough. In the interim, take it easy. Nocturne, enjoy the burgers. Savvy, thank you very much for the offer of burgers. Both of you try to get some rest. I'm going to do the same. Love and peace, my beautiful bees, and we will be back. Lickety split. Adieu.